Okay, then I, I will share my screen. Okay. Yeah, so just a reminder, you know, uh, yeah, you can go through the slides, but what we would actually like to see is how you have implemented the project. So spend more time on that. Right? You have uh, you are, uh, around 10 to 12 minutes. To okay. So is the screen visible? Yeah. Yes. OK, so uh, this is the presentation for SE Group 14 project. And I would like Arya to begin. Yeah. So hello, everyone. We are Team 14. And welcome to our project demonstration. So our team consists of five people, Kashif, Tejas, Ananya, Farhan, and me, Arya. So to start with uh, this project, the first step was basically understanding the problem statement which was to create a personalized course recommendation software for students, so which can help them basically stay on track and make progress towards their educational goals. So the, uh, first of all, we found our primary users and secondary users and tertiary users. So in this case, we used the example of Alice. So we created a storyboard where our user, for instance, was struggling and wanted to know what her uh, learning path should be in this career. And her uh, like peer helped her uh, decide and uh, help her know about our recommendation system. And once she tried logging in and uh, uh, registered on a portal, she got many uh, recommendations about what path she should choose and what all things uh, could help her in her educational goals. So once that was done, uh, it helped her a lot in planning her studies and tracking her progress as well. So. Once the storyboard was done, we thought of our components and tried designing our UI. So we designed a UI using Figma. And as you can see, we designed a different pages for each and every component. So as you can see on the screen, first of all, this is our login page. And here we can enter our username, our password, and um, then we created a registration page as well, where student can register. After that, they can create profile and also they can recommend and see the search page as well, where they can search about the courses. And on the course page, you basically get a lot of insights about the particular course. And to get the course, you can also add to cart. And in the cart, you can see all the courses and pay for the courses. So this was our first perspective and uh, for the users. And now you can see for the admin's perspective, uh, there is an admin dashboard where admin can manage the course, um, where they can edit the courses or delete the courses, then add a new courses. So this is basically how the man admin part works. So for while we were designing this wireframe, obviously we had to schedule some meetings and uh, collaborate on this. So Farhan will give more insights on it. So we basically first tried on Jira only for our collaboration and scheduling meets and basically to track our pro uh, progress. But uh, means while progressing uh, in the project, we saw that uh, GitHub has more integrated things uh, for tracking the issues, for tracking our progress. So we shifted from Jira to uh, GitHub. Here we can see our uh, Kanban board where we have uh, all the things assigned for tracking the issues and all. So here we can see the board where we, every, for now it's everything is done. So Kasif, can you show the uh, Jira Gantt chart? Yeah. So at first we worked on Jira also and we created this Gantt chart and the Kanban board also. So we can see that over here. From here, uh, Tejas will take over to show the API docs. Tejas. Yeah. So this is our uh, API doc, which we have deployed on the internet <clears throat> so that other developers can build their UI around our backend. So basically, we have categorized our endpoints into six categories. So first, we have auth endpoints.
So in the auth endpoint, the user can register login. So let's say we, we try registering a user. Uh, let's say let's try login. Underboard, okay. Okay, so we, we got an access token. Uh, similarly, we have endpoints for admin. In the admin endpoints, the admin can fetch list of all students. He can make a student uh, an alumni. In the course endpoints, we have basic CRUD endpoints, like we can create a course, delete a course, get a course. We also have a recommendation endpoint, which will return all the courses, which we recommend users based on their profile. And in the profile endpoint, we create and we can create and update a user's profile. And in the reviews endpoint, we have basic CRUD, uh, CRUD endpoint for review as well. Here we can also we can also flag a review. Let's say a user finds a review inappropriate, he can flag it, so the admin can delete it. And in the tags endpoint, we can tag the reviews and courses as well. So from now, uh, Anya, Ananya will take over to discuss more about text tag and test. Thank you. So let us look at the tech stack that we have used for our project. We have carefully selected tools that not only made our development efficient, but also interesting. Uh, for the uh, uh, for the backend, uh, we have used Fast API. So Fast API is a Python web framework known for its speed. We have chosen it because it has an automatic API documentation and it also uh, supports asynchronous programming. For uh, database, uh, we have used uh, MariaDB and PV. Uh, we have opted Ma MariaDB because it was open source, it, because it is open source. And we have used PV for uh, ORM because it integrates with Fast API seamlessly. For uh, containerization, we have used Docker. So it made a process uh, consistent and um, it simplified the scaling and collaboration as well. Um, after that, we have used uh, uh, view for uh, front end development. We have chosen view for its simplicity and for its reactivity. Uh, we have built our uh, user interface with uh, view. Um, then we have we have also hosted uh, our Vue.js pages on Cloudflare. Uh, it it helped in the streamlined uh, streamlining the process uh, for the development. Uh, we have used AWS LightSail. It provided a simple way to uh, deploy and manage applications. So uh, the Cloudflare helped us uh, clone the Git repo and build the application, and then it deployed uh, the, to the Cloudflare the global network. Um, after that, we have um, uh, we have used GitHub because it it really helped us with the collaboration um, for for the team members to know the issues and uh, and co connect with the code. Um, GitHub has helped us with that. Uh, it it next um, with all these technologies uh, we have we've tried to build a very modern looking high performance web application. So going forward to the uh, test uh, testing of the API, uh, we have implemented testing for all the API endpoints. And for example, we have uh, we, let us look at the test uh, testing for the auth API. Uh, could you like scroll a little down? So this is how we have um, mentioned about testing of all the APIs, uh, about the user's registration, about user's login, et cetera. We have mentioned uh, similar similarly for all the APIs in the Milestone 5 talk. So now let us go ahead with uh, the most awaited part about the project demo. All right, so uh, I will take over and show the demo. So this is the home page of our application. We chose the name Pick My Course, and we also bought a domain name for that so that you can easily find it on the internet. So for this, we went with a very minimal black background with some light text on it. And we have some description of what this uh, project is about, what this website can do for you, and a little bit of FAQ of what else, what are the some frequent things that you might want to know about this. And at the very bottom, we have our team members who uh, built this beautiful product. So after this, I will start by registering a new user. So when you go to this register page, uh, you are asked for username, email, password, and enter the password again. So I will make a new user. And register with that username. 
So as soon as you register, it puts you in this profile creation mode where it will ask you some questions. So I guess we begin with the flow. So first thing you have to fill is what is your name? Then next is uh, what is the learning preferences? Basically, what kind of courses you want to take? So let's say we go with a mix of both. Then after that, it will ask you what is your current CGPA. So let's say if I go with 8.3, and it will also ask you what is the current level. So let's say I go with degree level. Then after this, here we'll ask what are the three favorite subjects in order. So let's say if I go with deep learning, reinforcement learning, and machine learning techniques. And this is something that we're asking users that how much that the number of hours they can devote in a week. So let's say I go with 12. Now, this step is uh, the most important step where it will ask you the number of courses that the student is willing to take. So whatever is the number of courses that you take, we will be recommending them that many courses as well only. So let's say if I go with uh, four courses, right? And we're asking if they want to become something or they have any long-term career goals. So I will just add something like become a data scientist. Okay. And something about when they intend to complete this degree. Now this last step is optional, so I will go and submit, and it will put me directly into this recommendations page where it will give me some recommendations. So I can go and open these courses, right? Uh, so it's given me title, who's the instructor, uh, high level overview of what this course is about. I can go and add these courses to my uh, profile. And once I'm done adding this, it will redirect me back to this dashboard page. Now this page is uh, it's very minimal looking, clean looking. It's designed by Ananya of our team. And so here we are calling an API to generate this profile picture randomly. It's provided by Dice Beer. We, are, we have opted to go with a very simple uh, dashboard look similar to how Twitter X works. And you can see all the courses that you have taken here. If you click on any of these courses, it will show the, it will show you the page. So if I go here and select, let's say deep learning, so it will show me uh, the instructor's name, profile picture, what this course is about, what are the prerequisites, core requisites, any credits if there are, what is the price of this course, as well as the reviews. So let's say if I uh, don't like this review, so I can just click and mark it as flagged. OK. So this is uh, for a normal user. So they get the courses, and they can mark the reviews and all this stuff. Now, if I log out and log in as an admin, So they get a slightly different dashboard where they can see all the courses and the students. So these are all the students that are like registered in our course. And in, the, and in this course, it will show all the courses that are there. So let's say if I go to deep learning and I manage it, so it will show me all the flagged reviews. So I can delete whatever review I find offensive and it will delete, get deleted from the database. So, and lastly, we can add a new course. So we can add something like DBMS. So if I add this course, it appears at the bottom. We can also delete this course if I want. So this is pretty much a high level overview of how this application works. Apart from this, we also worked on the deployment side of this application where we had used, um, wait, where is it? So where we were doing a few things that as Ananya mentioned. So this is our GitHub repo where it's a mono repo where we have both the client and the server. And we have some deployment scripts as well. So there are a few things that's happening. Once it, one is it's it's linked to a Cloudflare Pages account, where every time you make a push to the main branch or any other branch, it gets deployed automatically, so, and it also generates a URL. Now, second thing is uh, this URL. Uh, we are also pointing our www.pickmycourse.online to this URL, so that you don't have to go to the uh, randomly generated URL that is given by Cloudflare. So we are using our own pickmycourse.online. Next is we also have another URL which you can see it is an A record and it's an API.pickmycourse.online which redirects to an IP address. Now this is the IP address of a VM which we are using on AWS, which is where our fast API is running. So if I go to this page 
And so FastAPI by default generates this Swagger documentation, right? So this is already running on the AWS machine. And lastly, we're using Docker for deployment of all these stuff. So we have a Docker file which describes how to build the project, and we have a Compose file which describes how to run the services and all those stuff. So I guess that concludes for our presentation. Thank you. All right. OK, thank you, team. Uh, Umkar, uh, do you want to start? Yeah. So yeah. So after this, uh, I mean, after logging and asking students to enter various different details, right? Uh, you suddenly a page comes where you are giving some set of uh, courses and recommendation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How that particular page is generated based on whatever data is collected? What happens in the background before that page gets generated? So uh, as of now, we're not using any fancy model. So what's happening here is we're just going through the database. And so based on whatever is the number of courses that the student has picked, we generate that number of recommendations. So just like a random pick? Yeah, it's, it picks up randomly. Initially, we had plans for building a recommendation engine, but then it like went over our prescribed time period. So we couldn't really go with it. Okay, so in the impl implementation, you have some set of courses available. You are randomly picking something from there based on the number, uh, the total number of courses students selected. You are showing that up. That's what is in implementation, right? Yeah. So, okay. Then can you uh, tell me a bit about what you have actually planned? I mean, is that it? It, it was the plan, or you have planned something else? I mean, in in your uh, milestones, is there anything else which you have planned uh, for this? Um, sorry, I didn't get your point. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's in implementation. I got it. But have you planned something more than that? Uh, yeah, we had plans. More, like, Can you explain what was the plan? So like, as I said, first of our plans was to build an actual recommendation engine, which could take in user's profile and recommend something. But then it was like going way our budgets and we had some other time co time commitments as well, so we couldn't really implement it. No, I, Apart from, I, I want you to explain a bit more on that recommendation engine. Recommendation how, engine. How, how recommendation engine you wanted to implement? I mean, okay, fine. You are not able to implement. That's a different story. But okay. what was your approach? How so, how you would have implemented given you had more time? Okay, so what we would have done is, uh, so back when in September, right, when this project started, so we started researching about collaborative filtering, content filtering, and we also looked into some kind of similarity matching based on vector databases, so which would like rank users profile and basically group some similar users together. Mm -hmm. So whatever sim similar users have taken, we would recommend other similar users the same number of other similar courses, right? So we so for that we would have to like write some models which would like um, take in some features from courses like difficulty what is the course course content who's teaching it and and tags as well so based on these things uh, we would have like made a some kind of visual uh, like a word cloud thing which would put courses in a n dimensional space where each course can belong so, so this was the initial plan but then it went beyond our like initial like assumptions. But uh, what was on this? Is, is it there in your original plan? The Gantt chart which somebody shared, uh, was it there? So uh, no, this isn't there actually. So I said because this was like going way beyond our like so capabilities and time. Wasn't planned, right? That that's my question. Okay. So the entire thing was not even it, it was not there in your plan from the beginning. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, we can say that it's not like officially in a written documentation format. So you can say that it's not planned. OK, so in the plan, you did not have any recommendation uh, system for this, or the recommendation model, uh, to be precise. Yeah, pretty much. OK, fine. Uh, OK, uh, have you used uh, Jira? Uh, oh, to, uh, yeah. Any other uh, similar platform? So we initially started with Jira, but then as we started working oh, yeah, on the project, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. So we moved to GitHub Projects. So GitHub Projects has like they offer similar features to Jira. I don't know if it's one-to-one -one mapping, but the things that we needed were present on GitHub platform. Like we wanted to manage our projects, so we were able to do that. We wanted to track our issues; that was possible. And I think that's pretty much it that we needed most of the things for. Okay, fine, sure. Uh, yeah, that's it from me.
Rajesh, you can continue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lobka. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I just wanted to get some uh, backgrounds from you all. Like, uh, are you all uh, working professionals or students, or what's your backgrounds like? So, I have been working for the past like eighteen months, and Pages is my co-worker actually. Yeah, we both work in the same company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am a student. Okay. Okay. I am a student and an intern, so I am also a student. Okay, okay. So, uh, why I asked is, I think there are some things which, uh, uh, which, uh, which are not taught in this course, and maybe the other courses also. I'm not sure, like the hosting and all of those things, right? So, did you pick it up on your own, or you all have prior experience in? Uh, so I would say it's something that I have been using in the past like six or eight months, like all the AWS Docker and GitHub, like, not GitHub, but yeah, mostly AWS and Docker. So at my current work, like we have to deploy some codes very quickly. So we prefer to use Docker for that. So it's like very quick for deployments and all kinds of stuff, like replicating environment on the virtual machine and stuff like that. Uh, that has been the biggest takeaway actually about Docker, about deployment, about hosting. So we got to know about a lot of stuff that we weren't uh, aware of previously. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, maybe to Kashipul and Tejas, like, uh, are there some things uh, which you found similar between the course and your current work environment? Maybe some of the practices, and what were some practices or some things which are not there in the course? Okay, so uh, one of the things that I would say that I found most similar was the uh, agile thing, right? So here we also have like meetings and like two week sprints, right? So yeah, where we have to decide, okay, this is the feature we're supposed to work on. And by this time we should have something to re report to, to our team leads or managers. Or if you're having some issues, then you can tell it before the deadline and stuff like that. So this is something I would say that I found very similar. And also the other stuff like GitHub and all those things, because we have been using it. Although we don't technically use GitHub, we have our own hosted version of it, GitLab. but yeah, it's pretty much similar in terms of use and all those kind of stuff. Yeah. Also, the code quality and code practices, like having test and all. So that is what, like, it is very similar to what we have in industry. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That's it from my side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So group fourteen is done. Uh, thank you. Group sixteen. Or oh, can we leave? Yes, sure. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So uh, we are group 16. So uh, Anirudh, can I please start with your presentation? Yeah, sure. I'm sharing my screen now. Hello everyone, this is the presentation for the software engineering project for Team 16. So here is all the things that we're gonna discuss in this, uh, a brief discussion about all the milestones that we have, uh, all the things that we have done in, the, in, in these milestones. So first of all, the target or the purpose of this application is to build a recommendation system for the students who are enrolling the uh, degree IT uh, BSc degree course. Uh, the factors that will be affecting this thing would be uh, enrollment of the previous terms, the students learning profile, their uh, preferences, their interests, and the feedback that has been given on each courses by the students who have already taken this course. So here is the composition and the role that has played by the entire team. Uh, Rajesh uh, is the project manager, Rahul and Arya, the full stack developer. I and Nirodh uh, has done different things. And Kulkarni, uh, Anusha has been the assistant tester and the uh, technical document writer. So the first milestone, which deal with, first we have to identify who are the users, and then we have to classify how many users uh, into, in, into different categories. For primary, we have student and admin. For secondary, we have faculty and teaching assistant. For tertiary, we are supporting staff and software developers. So here are the user stories that we have created for primary users as students. There are three stories. For admin, there are two. And for uh, secondary and tertiary, we have only one user story. 
now coming to the user interface so the storyboard uh, the uh, tool that we have used for creating stories are uh, the storyboard that and this uh, the purpose of creating storyboard is to actually uh, in a conversation in a uh, in a dialogue form explain what is the purpose of this application what are the difficulties that are being faced by the users and how this application could address them so here are the stories for faculties uh, for uh, students for faculties and the technical support staff we have used uh, for wireframes uh, we have used excalibur uh, these are the low fidelity wireframes to get the idea how the pages will be there what all sort of information that we need to actually present and in a particular page and how, what all functionalities or what all functions can be performed from what one page starting from login page to user profile from how to admit the data how to download the data from the uh, user uh, from the admin perspective these are on on synchronous with the user stories that we have uh, which we have uh, developed in the previous milestone so here are the wireframe so guidelines and uh, the things that we have taken into consideration while we were actually designing this uh, whole app was like effectiveness like as per user stories that we have uh develop or maybe we have written we have to go with consistency uh, uh, among that we have to keep the number if uh, efficiency says that the uh, number of steps to reach the final recommendation should be minimum the, we have taken care of uh, safety we have the learnability it's very easy to use we have used very familiar and consistent design throughout our application now we are moving to the scheduling and the design part that is uh, we had done in the milestone 3 for this is the project schedule we have used uh, gan gan chart the team gan uh, tool for that for project scheduling uh, we actually considered zira and pivotal tracker for it but since are uh, given the size of our team and the complexity of uh, jira tool we actually switched back to pivotal tracker for agile uh, for, for um, using the agile methodology to develop this app for design component we have tried our level best to Uh, make each in complement independent of uh, another uh, like uh, we don't want too much dependency of other components on it only a recommendation system is the one who has uh, since it is the purpose of this uh, the main target of this application is to give a recommendation that uh, that is the only component that is very much dependent on the component otherwise the design component is kept very simple here is the software design uh, uh, the class diagram and all the functionalities that one could achieve from this design now i would like anusha to please continue with the presentation yes sir uh, uh, coming to the milestone 4 we were asked to create api endpoints and we have created two types student api and admin api and uh, student gets to uh, submit his his or her feedback and uh, student can get uh, recommendations from the other students and front end is facilitated to making sure student can submit feedback for the courses completed by the student and admin api can upload students as a csv file or download students as a csv file and upload courses as csv file uh, first it will check if a file is provided and if it's a valid csv next slide yeah sure uh, can previous slide continuation uh, the admin can download courses and upload enrollments data if there is a new enrollment and uh, download enrollments and uh, download feedbacks and upload courses uh, all these uh, apis are documented in swagger and uh, uh, next slide uh, and we have used get and post requests and uh, status codes are also used like 203 and 403 next slide Uh, coming to the test cases for milestone five, this is just a screenshot of single test case for login API. Uh, for this is a log test for test function for login success, and we have used Pytest to test these all these test cases. And uh, now next uh, next slides are uh, admin API screenshot uh, to upload the student data, and uh, uh, it it checks if the file data file is present. And after that, uh, it uh, returns the status code uh, code as two hundred. And next slide. And uh, this is a, a screenshot of a single test function of the student API. Uh, coming to the tools, technology, and usage, 
uh, we have used xcalidraw to uh, for the, to create the wireframes and git as git is used as a version control and python 3 is used as a backend language and javascript as a front end language postman was used to test rest api and pytest was used with the test cases and visual studio code is used as ide and swagger was used to document these apis and create the yaml file chrome and safari browsers were used to access the application sqlite db were used as a, was used as database and SQL Alchemy uh, library was used with the Flask and DB browser as the database browser, Vue.js as front end, and Flask as a back end framework, and Jinja 2 template and uh, Bootstrap as styling library. Other tools are HTML and CSS. All these te te technologies were used as uh, all our team members were uh, comfortable with these technologies used by the MAD1 and MAD2 courses. Uh, coming to the hosting, the backend application is hosted on localhost on port 5000 and frontend is hosted on localhost on port 8080 and uh, project management, a code review was done by all the team members. So we have used the uh, tool, a pivotal tracker and, uh, and next question, next slide. Uh, issue tracking was done in GitHub. Uh, all this will be further elaborated by my team members. Next page, next slide. Uh, these are the screenshots of the GitHub. And uh, uh, yeah, front end of the application, the, the live demo will be given by my team member. And uh, instructions to run the application are uh, just download the zip, zip file and uh, install the requirements and run the Python file. Uh, references are the course content from software, our software engineering course and MAD1 and MAD2 courses. That's it. Thank you. Sir. So I will start the demo from that uh, starting point. I guess my desktop is visible. So this is the Excalibur where we have actually used. Uh, I have used that wireframe. So. This is where we have created all the wireframe, and ultimately we have actually mostly we have maintained this wireframe in our actual application. Uh, this is the uh, Swagger editor. So here we have created our uh, APIs. Uh, we have actually not tested here. We have tested in separately in uh, through Postman, and later after the integration with that uh, mm, the front and the back end. So we have tested it through PyTest. So this is where our YML is. And this is uh, this is our uh, our project management page. So we have used a pivotal tracker for that. And if you see that uh, project history, so we have maintained this very rigorously for this thing. Uh, so all along. So this is the full history of our pivotal tracker. Whenever we have updated something, for example, say some uh, document has been created etc those has also been captured here and we have actually given that link to the those documents into uh, into our tickets here and those are actually uh, whenever a particular milestone was covered it was reviewed by all the team members and we have accepted this thing so that's how and sometimes we have rejected also so this is how we have done this uh, uh, project management uh, that's all from my side about the demo. The next demo will be given by Arya on GitHub and that uh, uh, Gantt chart. Thanks. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so have you uh, like implemented it? Is, is there a working demo? Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, we have a uh, we have a uh, working demo. So we are starting with the end to end basically. So at the end, we'll show what exactly we have reached to. Uh, I think we are running out of time. Uh, so mm -hmm. maybe if you can show the demo first, then that's can... okay. So Rahul, so can you please take over? Yeah. Uh, you're on mute, Rahul. Thank you, Arya. I'll I'll take over and uh, share my screen. Okay, so uh, the the backend and the front end are currently running. This is the home screen uh, that we are currently at. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll take over. Uh, I'll, I'll take it uh, a little bit faster. So I'm going to first uh, start with the student uh, login. 
okay so when the student logs in it shows the courses that the student has taken and one section for the get recommendation you can also go to the profile of the student you can come back and then view all the courses uh, you can go to a particular course and submit a feedback for the course that you have taken and then uh, for the recommendation part we have given the student the opportunity to choose the number of hours they are going to invest and the preferred number of courses they are going to take it also <clears throat> the plan is to take all the details of the students from the back end and give them the recommendation of how uh, what courses they can take in the next uh, or upcoming semester this is for the student uh, we can log out and then i can go for the admin okay there are two parts for admin one is uh, the first three tasks that the ad, uh, an admin can do are to uh, manage the student enrollment and courses data and the second part is download the existing data so i can i can show the demo for the student data download we can see uh, the data for the all the students and we can also do uh, upload the student uh, data accordingly uh, currently it doesn't show the success message but yeah uh, this is how the application works thank you okay thanks Raul. Uh, omkar uh, do you want to start yeah sure so yeah, once again, the same thing. How we are showing the recommendations? Can you speak about that? Right. So uh, currently it is hard coded. Uh, we are reading it from a file which we correct, uh, which we manually picked. Okay. Our initial plan was to hard code uh, student profiles. Um, so. So we didn't uh, think about machine learning models or anything like that. What we thought about is taking the parameters that constitute of a student profile which gives us similar types of student we identify a student from that particular persona and then we give them a path that was the initial plan which we, uh, which currently is not implemented so we are taking uh, the recommendation from a file currently okay so uh, in respect of the uh, student student's data is still you are showing the same recommendation correct correct right now Correct. Uh, okay. Uh, one more thing. Uh, during slides, I think the very first slide or maybe the second slide, uh, you had some roles assigned to each one of you, right? Mm -hmm. So can you elaborate a bit more on that? How you decided those roles? Was there any... What was the thought behind that? Right. So our, our team makeup is uh, two P, uh, two uh, are students and three are working professional. Right. So based on the working professional history and what we do best uh, according to the previous terms we have taken the previous courses, we thought this is the way to go. Uh, so we have uh, divided the responsibility for the most experienced professional as the scrum master or project leader the the other working professionals are front end and back end developers and then uh, uh, according to the experience we have uh, asked anusha to uh, take the testing role and uh, documentation role uh, irrespective of the role uh, the discussion has been proper uh, we all joined the team meetings that we did uh, all were heard all were valued uh, the only thing is that we focused on some of the activities more than the others. That's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. That is all right. Yeah. Thanks, Omkar. Okay. So, uh, since you all said many of you are working, uh, so are you working uh, in uh, the software industry? Yeah, so um, um, none of us are uh, actually working in in creating websites or anything. Uh, we are data scientists. We we have one data scientist. We, uh, I'm a data analyst, uh, and Rajiv okay. is is a manager by profession. Okay, okay, all right. Um, yeah, so I was, uh, since you said that you all are data analysts and uh, data engineers, so. Um, I mean, I was just curious to understand why 
you did not try implementing some recommendation system, no? Because uh, yes. you all work with data every day. So. so, so probably I can answer this question. So initially, we have thought of implementing this ML. Otherwise, this uh, creating the back end and the front end. These are the things we have already done in App Day One and Two. So mm -hmm. we wanted initially we have thought up uh, to do that uh, some ML algorithm. Uh, but there are two problems with that. So one thing is that we don't have much data on this. So we have to create the synthetically. We have to create more of the data to actually have something uh, working ML model. So that is one thing. And second thing was that still we could have do that actually. But in, when the initially the project was introduced by that uh, TAs, so they told I asked this question specifically whether we have to implement some algorithm, machine learning, or traditional algorithm something in the back end. But they told specifically told this is not the requirement of this project. The so requirement of this project more of the process part. So that's why you have actually under uh, that plan all right um okay and uh, maybe uh, anusha can answer since you uh, like what are some skills you learned which uh, you know was uh, which you did not learn in maybe the other application development courses Yes, sir. I learned a lot from uh, all these uh, working professionals, sir. How they uh, how they uh, worked in a team and how they like uh, created an application. So um, I was present in every meeting, and I uh, so uh, how they decided uh, on what tools first. We have uh, like thought Jira, so then we have thought Pivotal Tracker. So um, and uh, how like change management also uh, according to the requirements we had to change. So all these I have learned. Okay, and uh, the others who are working, do you think you can take back something uh, into your back to your organizations? Yeah, sure. I would like to answer that. Yeah, the first thing uh, in software engineering, what what we learn is that uh, while developing software, uh, coding is not uh, is not the entire thing. It's like only twenty to thirty percent. But how to work in a team? How to actually think from the client's perspective better? Whether when they are not that technically advanced, when they don't understand each and everything, taking uh, everything and then converting into uh, uh, some some technical documents and explaining it to your team, that is something that uh, I would like to take it back to my organization. How to collaboratively work and in collaboration with each other. Right. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, team. Yeah, that's it from my side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Okay, uh, the next group that can present. Hello. Am I audible? Uh, yes, Samia, yeah, you can hear. Yeah, uh, I'll be presenting for a group 17. Yeah. Is my screen visible? Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, so good evening, everyone. Uh, today we'll be presenting our project for software engineering. Uh, we're group 17, and this is what we have come up with for the learning path recommendation system. Uh, so this is what we'll be going through throughout the course of our PPT. Um, uh, our team includes uh, Nivedita, Sairam, uh, Jevan, me, and Nitish. Um, so as we know, the problem statement was to develop a learning path recommendation system, which both the admin and the students can uh, have an interface to. Um, we will be using the enrollment data, the learning profiles, and the interests, and the feedback of the uh, courses from the previous terms to infer the patterns. And uh, the system should also be taking into consideration the schedules and the commitment that a student will be inputting. Uh, on the other side, we also have the admin who can enroll the data uh, and view the data and check out the schedules which are provided by the system. Uh, so we followed all the six milestones. And uh, I'll be going through each one of the milestones and the gist of what we have done. 
So the first milestone, as we know, was to create the to understand the users and create the user stories. So uh, the first user was, of course, the primary user, which we uh, know as the student, since students are the ones who will be primarily benefiting from the system and interacting with the system. So they will be using the system to get the course recommendations based on their profiles, uh, which will be including their uh, historical performances, their limitations, scheduling limitations uh, and interests. And the user stories would be something like, as a student, I want uh, the course selection in a way that it aligns with my weekly schedule of, say, 20 hours to complete my BSc in four years, or that I have had X and Y grades in my previous course, and so on and so forth. Uh, as a student, I also want the system to take into consideration the reviews that are provided by uh, students in the previous terms. And once I'm done taking the courses as a student, I also want to have a feedback, uh, give a feedback on the courses that I've taken. Uh, moving on are the secondary users. We have uh, taken administrators or admins as the secondary users, uh, since they will be only responsible for loading and managing the data, uh, enrollment data of the students. Um, uh, nothing apart from that. Uh, so as a user story for an admin, we will, as an admin, I would want to upload the enrollment data from the previous term so that the system can analyze the historical data to generate uh, recommendations accurately. And lastly, as the tertiary users who won't be directly impacted, there would be the data analysts in the planning team. So data analysts might want to understand the patterns in enrollment and the planning team in uh, IIT MBS would want to understand how the resources can be allocated and uh, what organizational or support team requirements uh, would be required. So the user stories are done accordingly. Uh, moving on, we have the wireframes. As a second milestone, we're supposed to create the wireframes. Uh, so we used Xcali Draw for uh, creating our wireframes. So this is the register and the login page for the student side. Um, uh, the student will be prompted to set up the learning profile where they can enroll their uh, input, their name, and um, um, preferences of number of hours they want to put in in a week, prior background, and um, what level are they planning to complete. Uh, moving on, the other. Um, the wireframes that we designed were for the student profile page, which was uh, inferred from the data set that was provided uh, or a sample data point that was provided and how the recommendation will look like. Uh, similarly, on the admin side, you have the login and the register. And then as, as an admin, uh, you'll be able to do three main things that is upload new student details, edit the existing details and delete any existing details. Um, uh, now, moving on, what are the technologies and tools that we have used? Uh, so we, uh, for backend, we had uh, mostly worked on Flask, Flask RESQL and Security, um, and SQL and SQLite Alchemy. For the front end, we used Vue as we had done for MAT2 and HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, for tools, apart from the coding, we used uh, Trello, Excalibur for wireframing, GitHub, and Google Drive and made for uh, just storing all the documents and conducting our weekly meetings. Uh, thank you so much. I will like Jevin to continue with the demo and the core presentation. Okay, let me share my screen. So, is it visible? My yeah, screen yes, is visible. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Okay, okay. So for like, I will first demonstrate the code. So uh, for Python backend, we have used the Flask and uh, Flask security for token based authentication and uh, sorry, Flask security too. And uh, uh, Flask uh, uh, restful for making uh, APIs. And uh, for front end part, we have used UJS too to like make a, a single page application so and uh, this is a, like a yaml file that you can see like here the api documentation and uh, i will start demonstration so first of all whenever user will open our site so he or she will be greeted with this login page uh, based upon their uh, uh, interest they can change the like as how they want to log in so first of all i will show a student dashboard so com. so once they will uh, log in uh, like their detail will be shown to there and they can like edit it and uh, like here like if they want to change their date of birth 
or they want to change their role number they can change it and it will change in the back end then like they can add or delete the data it will prompt if they want to delete it and then it will get deleted and then uh, for recommendation currently we have hard coded like uh, it will give uh, uh, all the courses uh, as a recommendation to the student and uh, other than that uh, like uh, this is all like uh, for student front end part we have implemented and then uh, like uh, for admin side we can like i will show admin gmail .com. So admin dashboard will be admin will be greeted with this dashboard. Uh, based upon their role number or name, they can like search uh, for the student. So like here, if I add Javin, it will show all the user having that name. And uh, uh, I have added another you know, so it will show the details. So based upon that, admin can uh, change the details and add the details and all all the correct stuff they can do and admin can add a course also so here it, an edit or course or delete course correct stuff so here we can add like a, a dbms uh, dbms and none and level so it will get added and uh, based upon this uh, like uh, this is all the front end part we have imp implemented and then like uh, i can demonstrate the uh, like a recommendation api and other api on the swagger also uh, like i will use a token from this uh, admin user i will add their uh, token here to authenticate this user now user is authenticated now i will use uh, this recommendation api uh, try execute so it will give all the courses currently present in the database so dbms as you can see so for like a uh, app demonstration i have completed thank you yeah thanks jay uh omkar do you want to start Okay. Yeah. So I saw your uh, UI was pretty basic. So was there any? I mean, was that your plan, or you planned something else but was not able to implement? Was there any issues? Yeah. Uh, so what happened is basically, uh, as we thought, like uh, all of us had uh, some uh, timing issues with respect to milestone six, and at the end of the day, I think uh, you guys have mandated man made it mandatory. So we came up with the basic UI for the last minute to integrate with the backend. So that's the issue. So yeah, maybe I mean I think uh, as as when we are building product, the coordination is most important. Maybe in milestone six, that's that has affected a little bit to the product. So yeah. Okay, and what about the recommendation system? So recommendation system, we we started out with a plan to maybe uh, go with the complex backend to uh, recommend the system or maybe do with the synthetic data. We are, we are also generated synthetic data with the chat GPT. But uh, after I think two or three weeks, uh, the main concentration is about the process, I believe, uh, as someone has raised in the Google spaces. So we thought uh, not to stress much on the recommendation part rather than going going to build that as a like just an interaction between the students and student just to give random recommendations might also help so that's why we went with the random so i haven't stressed ourselves onto the recommendation engine part okay so on what component you spent most of the time i think uh like uh, for the second apa part sir second apa development sir okay, um, yeah yeah yes sir. Okay, uh, can uh, each one of you just give me one point, like what new thing you learned compared to your uh, after projects? I think the main thing that I learned uh, was working with a diverse set of individuals because uh, before this project, every time I've worked would be with someone uh, that I've met in real life or it would be alone. So working together with different set of people and their different ways of working was 
a new thing that I okay, don't. Okay, then how you co coordinate it? Uh, we would have to decide when who is free and then uh, schedule a meet and then eventually we had to stick to a time and ensure that everyone comes at the same time because otherwise it never lines up. Okay. 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 So the one thing which I learned through this project was like apart from backend and fronted, uh, I learned more about API. Like earlier I had a knowledge of API, but not in depth. But after doing this project from Jabin, mostly I learned about API APIs, like working of APIs. So he was helping me in understanding how the APIs work. So okay, uh, can I? So uh, dif as different from app two, app two is like an uh, individual project. Uh, here it's like a group project. Uh, the more of thing is a process of how uh, the journey of the building of application, from like design to the development. Uh, mostly in any like uh, work professional scenario, all the team would be doing it as, as a single, the primary task. But here it's uh, it's little bit different because everyone has their own uh, work and also need to do this. So this is kind of little uh, different to me uh, rather than uh, in my daily uh, office plan. So the planning uh, is some uh, something that I won't uh, uh, land uh, more. I mean the journey of uh, agile thing and all. Yeah, one thing I learned is basically uh, the that is kind of like when. I think maybe uh, most of the product managers might have faced this issue when working with a remote set of people. Yes. Uh, I think the planning is most important and and also the task categorization or maybe the uh, roles, duties and roles that needs to be assigned particularly well. Because sometimes uh, there might be issues of uh, like the, that person might not be available to so there needs to be a backup. I think maybe I'll take this on a long term basically as a lesson maybe if going to build some products etc. Uh, for my side, like uh, same as others, like uh, working with diverse uh, people uh, remotely, it is little bit, uh, it adds a little complexity. And uh, for academic side, like uh, test uh, testing and like Swagger UI and stuff, it is new. Like I have tried the first time and I learned from like, uh, uh, like uh, Nitish and uh, like Nivedita regarding this uh, and Saikiran and so yeah, many things new like uh, like presentation part uh, I have learned from so, yeah, is very good at that and stuff. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Omkar. Yeah. So uh, one thing maybe I might have missed it. Uh, did you all? Uh, use any testing framework to test your APIs? Yeah, PyTest we have. Yes, PyTest we have used PyTest. Yeah. OK. And uh, so you all mentioned that you know there were some coordination issues and all of those things, uh, which is natural for a remote uh, project like this. But uh, uh, if you were to start over again, you know, uh, what would you have done differently as a team? Maybe, uh, maybe to start with, I will make milestone one as a mandatory to like figure out all the tasks we can populate in Jira or uh, Trello. Yeah. Maybe that will make things easier on a long run. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. First plan out, plan out with the dates and estimates. Then based on the, um, the availability of the team. Not in yeah. abstract planning, but yeah. in detailed planning. Detailed yeah. planning. Yeah. yeah. And understand everyone's schedule. I think it's hard to predict in three months time what who's gonna mm -hmm. do since we are all doing different things so uh, if you had a clearer idea if everyone was going to be busy at the end of the third month then it would have been better to plan it that way right so currently uh, uh so did you all follow some tracking system or was it a little random uh, like we used a Trello in the start, but uh, as we time like goes on, like it become harder to harder to follow that uh, Trello time timeline. But yeah, at the end of the day, we met the deadline. We met the, the milestones, but yeah. uh, we added not according to the plan. Estimates. No, yeah. All right, team. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been great with the course. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, we can move on to the next team. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. So a very warm welcome. Oh, very welcome. welcome. Nandi Maiko. Oh, give me a minute. No check, please. Shishti? No. Yeah, fine. So a very warm welcome to one and all present here. Today, Shishti Bansal, along with my group members, have got the opportunity to work on IITM BS learning recommendation system so the group members are Nandini, Manish, Yash, and Ishir. So as we know that many students while registering into the new term uh, suffers from, faces difficulty in registering into the courses at which courses to select in this term and what to choose for the next term. And it is very difficult to manage in their current schedule which is going on. So for that, we made a course recommendation system in which we had learning paths and feedbacks for their reference to. So over to you, Ishir. OK, so good evening, everyone. I'll just talk about the user stories which were involved. So mainly, we had primary, secondary, and tertiary users. The primary uh, users for the students who will be uh, using the application, they can basically view the course recommendations based on the profile. They can input their past acad academic performance and interest, which will give them personalized recommendations. They can also import their career goals, which can, uh, which will be uh, useful for their future courses. And they can receive feedback from peers on similar courses and check which course is good and which elective basically to select. Then secondary users mainly are the admins, which like the admins can customize the system setting, which can uh, enable, which can help them to fine tune the parameters to help get better recommendations. They can load the enrollment data from previous terms. Then the tertiary users will be uh, alumni. They can the alumni can provide feedback on the past courses, which can enhance future recommendations. Then academic advisors can be somebody who can uh, who can be hired by the IIT, uh, IITM uh, team, which uh, they can like communicate with students and give them guidance. Then faculty members can monitor monitor the progress and performance of the students. And they can also access the course recommendations to improve the course content. Then uh, next slide. Then this is the storyboard which we created using uh, Canva itself. So let's see that. Welcome to the software engineering storyboard presentation. And I'm thrilled to guide you through this engaging journey. Once upon a time in a not so distant land, there lived a confused student named Alex. Their academic journey was a turbulent one, filled with twists and turns that seemed straight out of a Shakespearean comedy. Alex often found themselves choosing subjects at random, leaving their academic fate to the whims of chance. It was as if they were navigating the labyrinth of their education with a blindfold, hoping to stumble upon a pot of gold. Managing all these courses proved to be quite the challenge. Their desk became a mountain of textbooks, and their calendar resembled a tangled web of deadlines. Desperate to lighten the load, Alex tried to drop a course, but fate seemed to conspire against them. The digital labyrinth was just as daunting, with error messages blocking their path to relief. 
And as if things couldn't get worse, failed quiz darkened Alex's academic path. It was as if the universe had conspired to throw them into the stormiest of academic seas. Their CGPA plummeted like a lead balloon. The numbers on their report card became a reflection of their struggles and uncertainties, adding to the weight on their shoulders. But just when it seemed like all hope was lost, a glimmer of light appeared on the horizon. Alex stumbled upon a magical tool known as a recommendation system. Hesitating, they entered their information, hoping the system could guide them to a better academic future. It was a moment of decision, a turning point in their educational journey. The choices they'd made earlier seemed like a distant memory, filled with confusion and despair. Looking back, it was clear that those decisions had led them to a labyrinth of uncertainty. They tackled their studies with newfound confidence. The chaos of books and deadlines began to make sense as they embraced a structured approach. As the new semester progressed, the burden on Alex's shoulders began to lift. The guidance of the recommendation system was like a compass in the storm helping them navigate the treacherous waters of academia. The quiz scores improved, and the end-term exams looked promising. Each success was a victory, each good grade a step closer to redemption. Alex's academic tale serves as a reminder that with the right guidance, even the most confused students can find their way to success. So, uh, as the... As the Nandani, can you please Nandani, can you please do that? Yeah. So as the item uh, recommendation is a complex or uh, uh, system like we are uh, decided to break up uh, break up the milestones uh, as in the course also like in milestone one we have just created this uh story user stories and all and milestone two we created a storyboard and the wireframes and uh in milestone three we created the class diagrams uh and then design the components and in milestone four we designed the apis and something at all in uh and milestone five we designed the uh uh, pie tests like the test cases for that and milestone six we complete the project and uh, represent it as like it shows the uh, streamlined process in the jira we use a jira as the management tool for the application uh here we are the created uh, issues and assigned to the particular member for like streamlined process and then uh, we created a wireframes with the Canva itself, and with uh, like it shows it defines the uh, like overall structure of the application connected with the different links. Now move over to the Manish. Here are the, some representations. Uh, so this is the class diagram we created, and it was the most learning experience for me. So as we can see that the uh, class diagram we have created so on the top there is the user class and after the user class there are three side classes named as a student admin and other users so the black diamond in the class component diagram means that the the child cannot be exist without the parent class and the hollow diamond which means that the class can exist without the parent class and uh, we have created the student profile another class and for the student profile class, we have created uh, uh, three child classes named as past course performance, course of the interest, and future goals. And for the admin dashboard, uh, we have like this. For the admin dashboard, uh, we have created one more child class, which is admin dashboard, uh, which gives the admin the more functionality. And for the recommendation, recommendation system, we have created the learning path class which has a function which will take the input as uh, some different classes to give the output for the students. And uh, we have one feedback page. So we have also created one another class for it. So this is the component diagram of our entire application. And this is the most crucial part where we have planned which component will interact with each other. Uh, the next slide, please. So in creating our in development of our application, we have used the following technologies. 
the flask and SQL alchemy for backend. Jinja is for a template rendering. And we have used HTML, CSS. And for version control system, we have used the GitHub. And for project management, we have used Jira. And for creating prototypes and basic templates, we have used the Canva. Next slide. So in conclusion, uh, this entire process of developing this app was a great learning for all of us. And we have learned various things that is necessary in respect with the real life software dev development application process. So, and uh, there are various challenges that comes across when we develop an app. And I, I learned more, uh, that the coding is just the 20% part of our entire application development process. The main part is how we plan, how effectively we plan different things. And so it is really a lifelong learning, this project for me. And I will definitely use these learnings in my upcoming project. Uh, next slide. Uh, so thank you. Now we can quickly move to the demo part. Thank you, everyone. So now I'm going to give you the demonstration of our application that we have created. So this is the code. So we have just get the inspiration from mad one because of time restrictions so here we have the uh, python file and we have all the models views and controllers in this this is our uh, test file and a basic sql -like database and this is some files that we are going to upload in the application okay so let's start with the application i have run it already and this is the first page of the application so from here uh, a student can sign up or register to the application. And if he or she is already registered, then they can log into the application with their username and, and password that they have generated already. So as we can see here that only IITM BS student can sign up with, the, with their student mails. So from where we are going to get this data. So let's log in with admin credentials first and try to upload some data there. And let's see how we are going to sign up. So this is admin's dashboard. We keep it simple and stick to the uh, what wireframe that we had created that we created. So here we can see the users that we have in our application. From here we can upload the data of the students. So suppose this is the file which contains all the users' details, and we can upload this and student data added successfully. I'm going to show you that uh, only this student who are in the, uh, whom we have uploaded, only those student can uh, register, register to the application like user8 at the rate at uh, gmail.com, we are going to register now. Okay, so we can add, uh, sorry, admin can add uh, uh, a course also to the application and not only he can add but he can update the uh, course also so suppose iitm want to change the credits of some course or want to change the name or is the faculty if the faculty is changed so they can uh, change the professor names like this okay so we can update the uh, course also and suppose if you want to delete we can delete the course if we delete the course, obviously all the feedbacks and past courses that we are going to add in the application will also get deleted. So on the very right hand, we can see a basic graph uh, because of time restrictions. We have just created simple rating versus course graph. So this was about admins dashboard. Now we are going to see that how a user can uh, uh, sign up. So as I said that only ITM BS student whose data is in the application only those students can uh, log into the system or sign up to the system. So we have just uploaded the data of user eight and nine. So let's see. So he can, uh, so first of all, let's just give a random email. So he's not going to uh, add to the application because user emails does not exist in the application. Now we will, we can
so now user will be redirected to the uh, application okay so this is the very first page when a user will sign up or log into the application so we keep it simple it was a recommendation system so we are going to get the recommended courses right now it is hard coded we didn't apply any uh, uh, you know machine learning algorithm or something like this a student can view the details of the uh, course and uh, the professors of the course we can add more data to it but right now it we have just keep it simple uh, just stick to the uh, bifm now from here a student can go to more feedback uh, pages so we can get the rec uh, recommendation three ways in the basis of courses which uh, application is going to recommend on the basis of uh, machine learning algorithm uh, student can get the recommendation in the on the basis of uh, learning path so right now it is just hard coded so uh, he, they can follow a particular path that are on the application and student can uh, read the feedbacks and get the uh, recommendations from there also okay so here we have all the courses they can go to any feedback pages and read the uh, read the what feedbacks of the other students or we can say faculty members so this is how uh, the uh, page of feedback will look like so it is here we can see uh, a limited word limit is visible so we can view the uh, whole feedback like this also and uh, student can uh, add feedback also so this is student 8 and we can add feedback and we can rate the uh, course and uh, feedback added successfully and uh, the student feedbacks who have given this feedback is going to visible uh, very first to his screen so this is uh, his feedback he can add it his hit his feedback also suppose he want to give some change some rating or change some test text so he can do this thing also and yeah, uh, Nandini, we are actually running out of time uh, yeah so yeah okay I, think, so I will i will i will just is, uh, just is there anything more, else uh, to show? yes profile okay so okay. this is profile so same uh, a user can change his profile picture and all these things so uh, on what data that recommendations are going to visible is this future goals that or uh, what are the future goals of the user or student what are the past performances that he have already completed the courses and in which courses he is interested so we can add these things and the idea behind uh, these uh, this this data was we are going to recommend the courses on this data so this was okay. the application yeah Okay, thanks, Nandini. And okay, you can keep that screen on. Uh, you can keep that screen on. Okay. I mean the application. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I was, uh, thing I was, uh, I tried wanted to understand was uh, how is the recommendation, is the recommendation now? Sir, so right now it is hard coded. Actually, we were not aware that we do we really want to create the application so we just keep it simple and hard coded it as of now right right now this is we are just showing the first four uh, courses from the database here okay on the left you have the on first the four courses yeah uh irrespective of what courses of what yes yes right now but we can do more obviously we can create a recommendation system yeah. and then what is this learning path learning yeah so uh, this learning path or we can say uh, a student want to follow some path that how much courses they should take in first term and in second terms the combination of courses so this is what we are showing here so like in foundation two uh, foundation level uh, they can complete the foundation uh, level in two terms in which they can take math one statistics one and computational thinking and english one in one term and other courses in the second term and we can give the pros and cons that this is the most uh, rigorous uh, path and what are the cons of this uh, disadvantage okay. of this uh, so like this
got it and uh, how would you like would in you the future um, include the feedback also into the recommendation yeah so right now we are not getting much data from the user so uh, we can obviously apply some machine learning algorithms maybe if someone want to uh, tell this thing yeah so i figured out that uh, we need a, this is a multi output is a multi output problem as we will be showing multiple cases as the as the can you please mute yourself can you please mute yourself yeah sure so multi output problem thanks so as we know that this recommendation system will give us many subjects for the students easiness so for this means that it is a multi output classification problem so for that we were thinking that we can use a, a white box tech white box techniques like logistic regression and other in which we can see what features for example feedback on maybe number of courses or maybe number of uh, hours the student can give so based on that we can uh, see which features are better performing Alright, and uh, and how did you all divide the work amongst us? One. So basically, in milestone one, there was an open discussion in which we around spent around one and a half hour on this that uh, which users we should include and who are primary, secondary, tertiary, and then what user stories we should keep because earlier in Mad One, Mad Two, we were given the wireframes, we were given the, given the story, but this time we have to figure out everything on our own. so on milestone 1 we had an open discussion for milestone 2 <clears throat> we created so we divided the work that two took storyboard and three made wireframes then in milestone 3 uh, we all divided the work again that scheduling work was given to one and combining the report was given to the same person then i made the classes and components and three were given the work of uh, classes and uh, creating the diagram then for milestone 4 and 5 again there was open discussion and uh, after that we divided our work that who will create which apis and how we will write the uh, the tests in pytest so basically it was discussion as well as division of the work all right uh, thanks srishti uh, unkar over to you yeah so uh, no ml model is fine but even the hard coded values i can uh, i can i mean can accept But right now it is showing only first four courses, right? So even though I am a diploma student, still I will show me those first four courses, right? Oh uh, yes, sir. They are like uh, yeah. It doesn't matter what uh, student you are right now, but it will show the first four courses from the database. We didn't segregate it according to the level. Like if suppose. Uh, So that, uh, that, so that, that basic hard coding you could have done, right? Based on the level of the student. You can at least show. I am I am fine with no ML model. I mean, up to certain extent, I can accept that based on time and other factors. But this is a very basic thing you you could have done, right? Yes, sir. Right, because it it doesn't look good when I am enrolling as a diploma student and you are recommending me some foundation level course. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That we could have done like. we could have just uh, like we have uh, the level stored in the database so we could have just segregated out from the level and shown okay. the first four courses from the degree or the diploma level but sir uh, if the user is in diploma level so he, he already completed the foundation level courses so the it the data is in the found, uh, completed courses so the uh, the recommendation doesn't uh, recommend that courses right so we don't have the data right sorry If the user is in diploma level, so uh, he we shall uh, um, uh, must completed the foundation level courses. So right. the recommendation doesn't rec uh, recommend the completed courses. Okay, then what the your system will recommend if I enroll as a diploma level student? Uh, can you repeat, sir? If I enroll into your system as a diploma level student, what your system mm -hmm. will recommend me? Oh, for for that we have to need the past data, like past performance data. Okay. We have to uh, need something. We are not to not collecting that data. So, so for that, like the user can add the past performance data, like in the profile itself, we have an option that the user can add the past performance data, okay. so the courses which he has, uh, he or she I has completed. Then what? Uh, then based on like. 
we can obviously segregate like for example if a user has completed four courses in diploma so he has around 12 courses left in diploma so we can uh, like we to so get a proper you like, what you can i can understand what is the current status that's what i'm asking what will happen in your system if, if that's the case how how your system will react to that like if uh, Okay, so no, we haven't implemented that. Like, if suppose a user, if suppose a user, uh, like adds four courses of diploma, then he's left with twelve courses. So we'll need more data actually from the user to recommend. Like, we haven't implemented the recommendation thing, but still, like, we'll need some more data that uh, about his past interest, about his future goals, and everything. And then we can probably with so that data. Thinking, right. So currently, with respect to recommendation, you are recommending first four courses, nothing else. There is no way to recommend anything other than those first courses. That's uh, where yes. it stands, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what I was asking. Okay. Fine. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, next group, uh, you can start. Uh, group 19. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, myself, the original party from group 19. And all my members are present here. So uh, we will start the uh, presentation from the report itself. Uh, Saki, my colleague, will start the presentation. Yeah, uh, sorry, to uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, uh, before you start, make sure you focus more on demo rather than those basic things which we have which we have already seen in your mind okay of course so of course of course your time uh, spend time accordingly definitely so uh, please share your screen yeah, yeah i was saying the same thing hello yeah good evening sir uh, i try to rush into the milestone and then move to the demo as you have requested. So uh, moving to the milestone one, we were asked to plan uh, the uh, user stories. And this is what we came across after the Scrum meetings. We had few Scrum meetings. And we came across uh, through mutual understanding and discussion that our primary user would be someone who is directly connected to the app and would be using it. So the student and the administrator of the app uh, we, according to us, are the primary users. Secondary users, according to us, are the course instructor, uh, instructors, academic advisor, data analyst, uh, IT support, etc., etc., who are not actually like using the app, but their uh, info is somehow uh, making an impact on the app. And the tertiary users are developers. Uh, moving to the uh, milestone two, in the milestone two, we were asked. Uh, two things. One was storyboard. So for storyboard, we used an app called Animaker, uh, where, uh, as you can see, uh, we had made a, a, a animated representation of the main issue, problem statement, as well as the solution to it. And moving to the wireframes, we have used Lucid charts, and we have made a rough wireframe. With that. And as you can see, these are the few pages we made the uh, wireframes for. Moving to the uh, th uh, third milestones, uh, we were asked for product, uh, project schedule and class diagrams, etc. So for project schedule, as few of us were already enrolled for the SPG project as well, and we were using uh, we were using a Jira application for that. And so we just decided, as we have a few of us are familiar with that, so let's go with Jira itself. And also in the course, we were uh, getting to know a lot about it. So we used uh, the Jira app for scheduling it, and it has a very good interface for uh, 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 keeping a track ev uh, of everything at a single place. Uh, we got the Gantt chart as well. Uh, coming to the... Uh, uh, class diagram, we used uh, something called uh, di uh, diagram.net. And we have already seen this kind of thing, uh, a class diagram and a uh, DB diagram in our math projects as well. So 
making this wasn't uh, the hardest part, but uh, obviously since this decides the whole uh, database and how it's connected, uh, how our app is connected. So we had to pay a lot of attention while making this as well. And so, yeah, this is about the scrum meetings, which we had, we had almost uh, every alternate days or something like that, uh, or whenever it was needed. And okay, for milestone four, uh, my friend uh, Dharashil will take forward. Thank you. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I will just share my screen. Yeah, uh, is it visible, Sakit? Yeah. So uh, the milestone four submission is, as you know, uh, the uh, yeah, million points. So uh, we designed that uh, exclusively in our meetings uh, and uh, and as the schema was already uh, discussed we just added it here uh, in the meetings and uh, it was uh, it, it was a, a rough uh, uh, rough code uh, to act, uh, to be there actually and uh, then we uh, we uh, roughly decided what endpoint should be available uh, for the api and then we continued forward uh, towards the next milestone uh, and uh, here's the my in the milestone five. Uh, there were uh, uh, the pytest uh, for uh, for our API endpoints, and um, we tested it uh, uh, natively uh, in our app. And as you can see, some results are mentioned. Uh, yeah, and uh, for the coordination uh, of the code, we use GitHub uh, in the uh, GitHub repository, and uh, we use basic function of it as uh, we are only four people, and uh, there is no uh, hierarchy in our team. Uh, everybody would just commit uh, commit the changes they have made, and just make sure that uh, only to commit only to commit those changes uh, which they have uh, ensured. Uh, and as the GitHub inert inherently ensures about the code change, so there was uh, not a bit uh, issue from our end. And then we used Postman for the uh, checking of the APIs. Uh, of course, uh, Studio VS VS Code for uh, uh, as, as an ID and uh, Swagger for uh, API endpoints and uh, uh, all browsers from uh, everyone's laptop and SQLite for, uh, for the backend uh, database as we used uh, in the MAT projects. Uh, we used uh, Vue.js 3 for the front, front end and some good stuff for the styling and uh, estimate CSS service there. So uh, the main uh, backend language is Python. And uh, we use class frameworks to apply all those functionalities uh, and and the core uh, data uh, core uh, Python code. So our application is hosted at 8,000. And yeah, uh, so here are the some basic uh, instructions to run the problem. Basically, uh, basically the readme file. And uh, the most of the code review uh, we we used to do on the meetings. Uh, and all those changes are mentioned in this uh, in those. Get a commits to, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. Here's the uh, screenshots of some uh, Google Space and the Google Meetings. Uh, I will ask to uh, Dania to present the present the uh, project itself. Hello, Dania. Yes, yes. Hi there. Thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. I'll present my screen. So this is the main page of our app. Uh, these are the links for user login and the admin login. Uh, let's, let's log in as user or student. So I can enter my ID and password and I can log in. Uh, the first page I get is the profile page. Uh, here, uh, the profile details are visible, but they are not editable but they are just visible. And uh, the other link, the other pages I have are completed courses. So here, uh, the list of all the courses that the particular student has completed is there. Uh, the le corresponding levels, the score uh, that he or she has, uh, has 
got the grade and here uh, the the ratings that i have already given or feedback is will be visible in order to edit i can just uh, edit here and give uh, my feedback and submit uh, individually for each of this and this will uh, get updated in the db and the most important part of it the recommendation uh, here uh, i can say my domain preference uh, the number of hours i can uh, spend here the num maximum number of subjects uh, i can take clicking this button would give me the uh, recommendation and the uh, other important details about the course uh, the details from the other students so that will be visible so this is the most important part uh, the number of weeks uh, is it has a lower bound uh, and the maximum subjects has an upper bound of four so that's taken care and uh, clicking this i can log out uh, i can go back to the main page this is the link for the admin uh, login here i can uh, Log in using my credentials. Here, uh, there are the main, the first page or the main pages are uh, the admin is the one who uploads the. Th this is the link to upload uh, the main page. You get is the place we upload the uh, profile details and course details. Sorry, the course details. And here, the user details, like profile uh, details and all, can be added using this link. We go to the upload data first. I can click here and browse uh, from my uh, computer. I can upload, successfully uploaded. Uh, that will be shown. And we can upload the user data also. And this is also getting uploaded. And then uh, I can log out. Uh, this will be updated in the uh, DB. So that's all about our app. Yeah, thanks, Tanya. Yeah, maybe you can keep this page itself. So, how is the recommendation happening? Okay. Yeah. For recommendation, we have considered a domain uh, and the number of hours that a student wants to study and the maximum number of subjects that he is willing to take, and also the level he is in currently uh, uh, studying. Based on that, uh, what we have done is, uh, firstly, we have filtered out the uh, remaining courses that are not completed by the student and the average course ratings and the average uh, course reading and the average weekly hours that the remaining students have put in for the remaining courses for each course and based on that we have sorted and if the student is uh, st studying only that degree uh, that is given more preference and we are giving uh, in the sorting we are giving more preference to average number of uh, hours and next to that we are giving more preference to rating based on that and finally we are we are filtering out the maximum number of subjects the student is willing take willing to take and then we are recommending the subjects all right and i think you are getting all this data from the csvs right yes yes yeah i might have missed that can you show what is there in the csv yeah dhania can you show that? yes so basically in the csv also we have considered only foundational subjects and uh, uh, diploma level subjects only degree mm -hmm. level subjects we haven't considered so there are like five users uh, five different users where one of one user has completed all the subjects in foundational uh, one user has com partly completed foundational where one user uh, is in diploma where he has completed some of the courses and one user has completed all the courses in both foundational and diploma. So we have considered different distinct users. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, 
uh, with regards to testing and all, have you used some testing framework? Uh, we have used PyTest. Okay. Uh, to test the APIs? Uh, you meant to say from code and or like from API? API, API. API, we have tested it from um, Postman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, PyTest you have used for? Sorry? And PyTest you were saying you used it for? For uh, in the code. Yeah, uh, we used it for uh, running those yes. test cases. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So as per the uh, requirement, we changed a lot in the end. So I guess the uh, cases uh, won't have conformity now, but uh, mm -hmm. we do did do test them. Definitely, yeah. All right. And uh, how did you like divide the work amongst yourselves? So uh, basically, uh, we were quite flexible with the availability of everyone. So at any point of time, there was a subset of at least three to four uh, from uh, five of our team members available. So most of the, uh, the pre uh, most of the work from one uh, milestone one to milestone five, uh, we would we would usually do uh, ad hoc on the meeting itself, and then uh, uh, only some subset of members would do the work, and then we would pass on that work to the last member to check it uh, so that everything is all right. And basically, we did that to uh, every milestone until five. And uh, for the milestone six, uh, we uh, we uh, made like uh, Chandra is the most experienced one. So uh, she uh, created the uh, whole uh, code, and then uh, we and uh, she was asked to assign all those tasks to us. Then uh, we complete all those tasks she assigned, and then uh, that's it. And then uh, we would uh, complete all those tasks assigned, and then uh, push it to the GitHub repository. So that that's how uh, uh, it was. There wasn't any spe uh, specific pattern of uh, locating uh, the work. We just uh, did it uh, on the uh, availability of every member. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. That's it from my side. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, can you show wire frames? Anyone that you can you quickly show me the wire frames? Uh, just a second. Uh, uh, I will show the, uh, share the screen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it visible? Uh, yeah, it is. So initially we designed a uh, wireframe. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't just quickly, can you scroll? Uh, this one to see. Yeah, yeah, this is a login student. This is login yeah. admin. Okay. And this is a register. Uh, we didn't uh, enable register at the end because we thought that uh, every student would be, his admission would be ensured by the admin or the authority himself. Okay, uh, okay, so, fine. Yeah, Next. We didn't implement it. Then there's the dashboard. Hmm. Uh, uh, here, uh, we actually uh, thought uh, message admin was not much required, so we removed that and just implemented the profile mm -hmm. recommendation page. And uh, this is uh, the uh, courses that, uh, sorry, the profile of the student, which has completed. We, uh, as, as we showed, uh, we have implemented that too. Uh, here uh, is the domain preference. Uh, the design is a bit different in the original code. Yeah, actually, uh, that's but, why I said to check the wire frames because we really yeah, yeah, yeah. The, definitely, uh, definitely. Okay, fine. And that's yeah. all I just wanted to check. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, the most important thing about this project, are we uh, managed to ch uh, do changes according to the situation. We try to do all the work uh, according to the milestone, but we were definitely uh, on the point to make uh, some last minute changes too. And just uh, try to add it to complete uh, the main uh, functionality of this app is to recommend these courses. So that was our main thing. Uh, there was, uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's it from our end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it from my. I just wanted to uh, check that that those wires, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you so much, sir. Have a good. Yeah. yeah. Have a good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. So, uh, we okay. can, uh, yeah, you can stop sharing and we can start with the things group.
ग्रुप ट्वेंटी अश्विन So, sir, uh, let me uh, 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 give it over to Vinay, and he will start with the presentation. Yeah. Um, can you share your screen also? Yeah, sure. Give me a moment. Yes, it visible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, good evening. Um, our first uh, idea of going through this project. Uh, was to identify the users and the requirements for the course recommendation system um we identified our primary users to uh, mainly comprise of students uh, from all the three uh, uh, levels and uh, the secondary users included the course instructors assistants and the data handling team the ones who would be uploading the data and the statistics for each of the courses and the tertiary users uh, we couldn't uh, sorry yeah. uh, you know sorry to interrupt uh, please focus more on the demo and quickly go through milestones of the report or slides what you have prepared okay we are more interested in the actual implementation of the demo which you have the app which you have created okay yeah, sure sure um look okay, maybe a, just a quick idea on how we went around going yeah, yeah sure yeah. and i'm not saying don't do that i'm saying yeah so just a quick yeah, go through sure. it and focus more on the uh, demo We'll take five minutes for the whole thing, so and then we'll move on to the demo quickly. Yeah, for each of the users, we try to identify the uh, stories, and for that, we uh, split it among ourselves, and we realized uh, um, with uh, multiple stories coming up from each of us, uh, each connecting to one feature that we want want to implement. Um, each of us uh, sat down together in many meetings, and we kind of uh, got that together. I would pass on to. Uh, Who's, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take, so, yeah. so once we kind of uh, identified all the user stories that we had to do, next we moved on to storyboarding. Uh, once you can show the storyboard. So based upon the requirements from the user stories, we kind of created a storyboard uh, for each user. For the primary user, we just wanted to think about as two students uh, wanted to get a recommendation system, and a student come, kind of comes and tells them that this portal is there, where they can go and. Uh, Kind of give their uh, uh, preferred courses, and it kind of gives them what courses can be a good combination that can be taken along with us. And in a similar fashion, we also did the, the secondary and the tertiary users as well. Uh, rather, this was something to talk about the analytics of the courses that is useful for the TAs or any course instructors which are there. And for the tertiary user, from what we identified, we were not able to clearly. Uh, you know, say which tertiary user might be you know finding all of this app or recommendation system useful. But we found out that the IT support might be somewhere uh, you know helpful by using all of these systems. And again, based upon all these storyboard, we created a a UI which could be kind of potentially which we were hoping to develop. And this is what we came up along with this. We have the user profile where we can see along with the courses which he has taken and the number of credits still now which he has completed and. Uh, the feedback from the courses from other students and we get a small course analytics from this and the course recommendation which is the actual uh, necessity for the whole project so this is what we are hoping to develop at that point of time during one student uh, next we'll go on to the uh, yes Pramod. hi as uh, i'll be saying about uh, the uh, how we implemented the database at the background so Uh, so in our project, we tried to implement the following classes. Uh, can you show the class diagram? So uh, implement the following classes: uh, users, feedback, enrollment ticket, etc., uh, with the shown parameters. User classes uh, stores the info on students' login information. Feedback stores the feedback of the students for the particular course. En enrollment so stores the uh, uh, info on courses that the students enrolled, and so on. As of now, we have implemented uh, these for. Uh, the primary users so to say 
and some modification on the final code is uh, made to make it compatible with the other elements as far as the scrum meeting is concerned uh, can I go to scrum meeting so uh, we conducted two meetings every week and we discussed the relevant uh, concept related to the week's milestone uh, that's it that's it so <clears throat> further cons uh, further topics will be discussed by uh, ashwin <clears throat> so then we moved on to like uh, start making api endpoint for our course recommendation system so we discussed and finally came up with around 14 apis for our uh, like uh, system so uh, so basic APIs are login APIs, view profile, view uh, user info, like uh, student details, and uh, get recommendation API, and view feedback, direct feedback. So like sitting together, sitting together. So this was a plan we had while developing the API. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll just go on to the demo. And uh, so we used the usual Mat2 stack, which is using backend Flask for uh, uh, Flask for the backend framework, and uh, we used uh, Vue.js for our front-end server. So I'll just start by running the application. So we'll just first create a virtual environment. I'll source the virtual environment. So we <clears throat> install all the requirements which we have in our requirements of PHP. Yeah, and we can run our backend server. Our backend server is running, and we can also run our frontend server. Yeah, so I'll just refresh. This is the port at which it's running. And this, as you can see, is a login page. So we can also sign up as a new user. Let's probably create a new user. We have also made sure that we have sprint in validation over here, as you can see in the password. Yeah, so this is the page that is kind of similar to what we did in our, uh, in our UI design. And we're trying to come close to that. So you can see the student details. You can know at which level you are, how many credits you have got. And uh, here, the course feedback can be given. This is still not fetched on the back end because we have not got the input from the students. But you can choose the different courses and all of that. You also get to know the statistics for how much time you spend per course. Also, for that, we don't have the data. But this is how the visualization would be. And we have used Chart.js for this, which is a, which is a very interactive and dynamic uh, analytics uh, solution. So we can interact a lot with this particular implementation. And here, let us say you choose that you want to do, you're doing English one at this term. You get a list of uh, course that are recommended for you. So this is how we envision it to be. Like that. And as usual, as usual, you can log out. And also one more thing is that we have made sure that that's role-based uh, role access actually over here. A token is generated and stored here in the local uh, token. We have complete token-based authorization, and that's how uh, we are handling the role-based access over here. So only page, unfortunately, that we could implement. But uh, we have done a lot of backend APIs that have been implemented over here. So, so we have split. This is how we have organized that code. We have a controller set PI that fetches the code from the APIs that separately kept. And there's a models that PI which has all the models and all the relations defined. So this is what our uh, project is. So thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ramshi. Uh, so yeah, you can keep the screen. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to understand what have you implemented in the APIs? Sure, sir. Uh, Ashwin, would you like to take over that question or uh, do I answer? Yeah, so like uh, we basically have a log like a login api like where it will fetch the information from the back end and uh, authorize the user and we have no no uh, like for uh, name uh, if you could go back to the code i can see that you have models for course feedback 
course enrollment and all. So, are, yes, are they are, are, are there APIs for uh, yes, course sir. feedback and all? Yes, sir. so uh, I'll just explain the logic behind these, behind these models and then go to the code that we have kind of implemented. So first we have the US user model, which has all the user related data. Then there's a course model, which has all the course related data. And then we realize that you need a relationship between user and courses. It's a many to many relationship. And therefore we have a relation table there called user yeah. courses, which is a relation table between user and course. And then we have course feedback and course feedback also is a relation between user and course again. So we need a separate thing for that as well. That's what we kept here. And what is course enrollment? So course enrollment is what we vision, uh, which our model will train on in the future. Uh, this is ultimately going to have all the data of all the course enrollment and all the, uh, you can see so the grades that have been received at what time of the year. And all of that is the data that will be stored in the course enrollment. And course to course is to is create a uh, graph kind of, uh, 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 basically to create this relationships between courses as to what are prerequisites and what are the right. courses. So that is what and, it is. And, and APIs uh, have not been implemented for A few of them have done, sir. So I'll just go through over that. So for the user, we have created the, the login and sign up as it is here. And we can get all the user details. We can get all the user details. That's how it's questioned. Yeah. We will use this yeah. for the admin side. And it's token not raised. So we will use the admin. Only if you have the admin token, can you even look at this? Yeah. And then uh, same, we can also get it for user wise. Oh, uh, yes, sir. For the courses. So this is the data that we actually, uh, right now, we didn't have a working model because we don't have enough data for it, sir. So we kind of did, uh, kind of, you know, uh, got some uh, random data from, uh, we generate, generate some random data and use a priori algorithm. I think Kirpa can talk more about it. But this is what the data that we got after applying a priori to a randomized uh, data set. And here you can see we get the course details. And we can also, and what is this course set, right? So in course set, we are trying to, uh, this is uh, based on what input you give, you'll be able to get the output, uh, uh, as you can see over here, sir. So based on what input we give, and we can get that output. That's what the course set is there for. But this yeah, is, yes. these are the APIs that we have. Yeah, so how is that coming? Like if I give a particular input, how is it? Uh, yes, sir. That, yeah. uh, what we simply done is that. Sorry, sorry, Kirpa. But maybe I can take that question. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so the method that we use to kind of get all these data, depending upon the input, is uh, we envision an a priori algorithm that can be used, uh, that can, uh, which kind of looks at the frequency of course combination that a student has taken. This is the intuition behind. What a priori algorithm would do, but since we were lacking with data, what we had essentially done was generate our own sets of randomized courses. Say, for example, if I take English one, what is a good combination? So we randomly we were generating data on our own, and we have put them here. But in a sense, they would uh, be coming from an a priori algorithm, and you have just put all of these course combinations in a dictionary, and we just find the keys from the user when the user enters any particular course. We check for that particular key in the dictionary, and the values would be the course combination that can be taken along with those courses. And that is getting uh, uh, returned back to the user in the front end. So this is the whole model which we have created. Right so right now, the recommendation engine, I would say, is a kind of a black box that we have just eliminated using this. But our intention, right. we have a, a kind of idea as to how we would do this in future if we have access to data and we have a real-time recommendation system that's powered by data. So our idea is to use a hybrid model one uh, because the, it, we don't have labeled data over here it's more unsupervised learning and we'll perform some some sort of clustering to get a subset to get different groups of different clusters of students that are similar in their way of choosing courses so we can cluster students based on that and that but that won't that will give us information as to how these students make their choices and second we'll also use an a priori algorithm that will give you the best association the based on let's say our target output, sure. let's say if our target is to get better CGPA, then we'll use an a priori, uh, we'll use that as a target and get the uh, corresponding association rules. And sure, using sure. these two, yeah. I think we want to give a hybrid. Uh, In the future, product. we were also hoping that we could kind of implement an RNN algorithm that can generate the sequences. So that is sure, actually sure. something that I'm uh, working on right now. So some okay. some students. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Uh, Okay, yeah, that's it from my side. Maybe Omkar, you can. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, so 
So first thing is what was your work distribution across T? Sir, right. The work sir is asking a distribution of okay. yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, sir. So we Yes, Kirpa, you can take it over or? Yeah, uh, I'll take it over. So basically, like uh, in every meeting, we used to, like not every one of us was available. So we used to, some person used to take the lead for that particular week and we used to distribute the works amongst ourselves. Even though the person was not available in a meet, we used to kind of uh, work uh, offline or even uh, uh, away from the meet and get things done. And this was uh, something which used to happen every week. Like every team member used to take up leadership for that particular milestone and we used to kind of work along with each other like that has been working out since the start and uh, if any changes or any can you, can you tell me who worked on what uh, ah, okay yes sir so, so to put it in uh, Kripa, yes, yes, yes. so starting with the user story sir uh, as uh, Vinay said we came together and uh, decided what user stories that we have so for primary users me and uh, Kirpa took it for secondary users Vinay took it and for us uh, Vinay and uh, Pramod took it for third users Ashwin took it so that was there the user stories came and then came the work of uh, doing design and uh, generating the users uh, giving the storyboarding since kirpa is good with design and uh, coming up with uh, all of that uh, his prior experience he took up uh, storyboarding and i i and promote took up the design of the uh, ui design as we see here for the student dashboard vinay took it up for the uh, course uh, for the tas and the secondary user the ta and the uh, let's say the uh, course instructors and the, the, the final thing for the admin was done by Ashwin, sir. So this was there. And after that, uh, the person who took care of uh, doing all the documentation and all of that was Ashwin and Pramod. And the code part, uh, I have, I, uh, since I did well in my MAD2 project, I took care of the back end. And front end was part was taken care of by Vinay and Kirpa. And uh, so in summary, this is what was split up. But uh, based on, uh, because all of us, some of us are working professionals, some of us have another degree to do. We manage the time in such a way that we split our work. Uh, in a, such a manner that we can you know manage our uh, uh, that we take the lower of the other people if necessary so at it uh, over uh, if we average it out everyone has done equal amount of work but at, at any particular milestone we are we are shared our uh shared the workload and made sure that we stand for each other that's what that's how we spread our workload so. okay okay and uh yeah so uh which part of particular this particular project you spend most time on so most time yes sir so we actually to be honest sir uh, uh, one recommendation from our side is that uh, we feel that there should be more little more time given for ideating the project and to come up with uh, uh, let's say to uh, the, the time which actually took most of the milestone one and milestone two sir because that's where we actually had to think about the uh, the logic behind the program and uh, we had to think about what we actually need out of this project or what we actually yeah. need out of such a system yeah, in, in that sense, uh, we were also hoping to get in touch with the instructors or uh, the people who would actually be using the software to understand the requirements. Since it was hard to communicate with them, we had to come up with our own set of requirements, uh, thinking about scenarios. Uh, so I feel it was more of an idea. It was hard. I mean, uh, see, the students were the people. I mean, students is the most important uh, person yes. who will using it right so yeah, you are a students you have other friends you could have collected data collected requirements from fellow peers in the program and yes. apart from that we had live sessions every week where instructors were available so i i don't agree with this point where uh, oh no, no. Uh, in terms no, of students not... we had enough data i yeah. thought in, in terms of the people the instructors who were going to use it the secondary users we wanted a better idea on that because well, for, for the primary that, users we... live sessions right mm -hmm. yes sir this is just uh, 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 technically we're just trying to say that this is why we found it difficult yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, from our person as students we found it difficult to think about secondary users not that we didn't have the time or we didn't have the let's say the resources from your side that there's complete support from the team. What we mean is that as students, what we actually found difficult was to come out, come out with these actual requirements and think of it in a, let's say in a logical manner as to what, how does it end up in a software? So this was kind of new to us. And this was the milestone one and milestone two was where we actually spent a lot of time relearning how to actually do it. And in the previous applications that we made in Maroon and Mad2, we didn't think much about this and we just directly went into developing the application. But here we actually, knew what goes behind developing an application coming with all the prerequisites coming up with all the uh, uh, let's say that uh, coming up with first come up with a, a proper class diagram all of this taught us that I, and i feel that milestone one to two was the crucial part and where we actually found it difficult 
that's so what uh, like, we want yeah basically brainstorming the ideas was like little difficult like we took many uh, like lot of time to brainstorm what we need to develop here so like uh, uh the thing is like we started a- ambitious like uh, we uh, like if you see the user like we, there was a lot of apis and lot of thing but then we are not sure like how to implement those in future we didn't get the enough time so like uh, starting we did it ambitious and uh, like while coming to reality it was like we are able to implement only few at the end so okay. i think the agile was useful at that perspective like agile is like uh, we will be do uh, starting with something and like frequent changes are there so like so uh, at the end like uh, we uh, like we stick to what is needed so the basic need is recommendation system is needed so we uh, we were kind of concentrating on that okay fine sure uh, yeah that's it thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you, thank you sir yeah thanks okay so adarsh nitin can you guys can take over is here yeah i'm kathins hey hi nitin adarsh uh, yes sir varam yeah hi uh, prajesh you you saying something No, no, no. Yeah, thanks, uh, Nitin Adarsh. Yeah, thanks, Omkar. Then I leave. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So Adarsh and Nitin, now you guys can start with uh, the next group, group twenty-one. Uh, I'll stay back for some time, uh, but you guys uh, will take over. Yeah, sure. So which will be the next group? Twenty one. Uh, group number twenty one. All right. So group number twenty one can start. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Sir, we should open our cameras. Ah, uh, you can keep it to the person who's speaking. If uh, there is no issue, if there is network issue, we can look at. I mean, have that uh, closed. Okay, okay, fine. So the major thing is you uh, should have your screen shared. Uh, whoever is presenting the presentation. Okay. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, so I'll just start. Oh, okay, Richard, you can take. Yeah. Is it uh, visible? Uh... Yeah, visible. Okay. Um. So good evening. Um. Uh, my name is Richard, and uh, I'm here with Team Twenty One. Uh, to demonstrate the project uh, that we worked on, the Learning Path Recommendation Application. And uh, uh, so we'll be. Uh, this presentation will be a little uh, uh, emphasizing more on the software design part. Uh, more on how we approach the problem and uh, what are the milestones that we uh, what are the tasks that we did in the, each of the milestones uh, a small introduction uh, so um, so this application uh, let me just okay so uh, you know this uh, application uh, clearly uh, serves the students in a very uh, beneficial way so most of the students uh, as students we have come across uh, difficulty in navigating through the uh, academic landscape right so there are several reasons it could be because of wide range of courses that are available or it could be um or due to simply simply a lack of motivation for the students uh, so a system like this could actually uh, certainly help students uh, make informed decisions on the choices of courses based on their interest and uh, commitments um and uh, you know uh, additionally uh, the application can handle uh, you know the uploading the enrollment data and previous uh, uh, you know uh, take feedbacks from the students and uh, evaluate on the uh, help in uh, recommending students with the courses um so yeah um sudeep tha uh, would you like to go to the next slide yeah yeah sure 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 so so the first thing we started with was uh, after understanding the problem statement we started with uh, getting the user needs so as we are users of this course so it was very obvious for us to understand that what are the user needs so a few things that we learned from our own experience is that uh, every student has a uh, different learning pace and according to that they need personalized personalized recommendation so we thought of that also and also we thought of uh, so it, this we noticed in our uh, online degree program also that before like few months before i think this feedback 
on every videos this feedback button for every videos was introduced so that also came into our mind and we also like thought of incorporating the user needs in two ways one is that the user needs to uh, have personalized recommendation that's the goal, main goal of the app and other is that uh, users also should be able to learn from the experiences of past students so that we also have put forward in terms of feedback and also the user so uh, another user need that we have identified was the to track the progress that how many credits the student has completed and how many credits he has more to complete so in that way we have come up with this uh, user needs so yes that's from my part i think uh, sudan should nevida yeah continue yeah. nevida yeah. Yeah, uh, so coming to our front end development, uh, in order to make sure that our application is user friendly and also visually engaging. So, for that, we use the powerful combination of HTML and CSS. And about the project management, uh, we used a uh, Gannett chart and uh, where we also tracked our, our Scrum meetings. And um, we also started. Um, you know, tracking our issues by using uh, Git. So this made sure that we had a very collaborative approach. And also during the development process, whatever bugs or issues that we faced, we used uh, Git for raising it. Yeah, Richard, you can also show the some UI parts like the access that we have. Yeah. Oh, the UI pages? Or? Yeah. OK. Um, OK, I need to share my screen. Then. Uh, yeah. uh, share. Screen. Okay. Um. So yeah, we just have this simple uh, HTML and CSS file. Not not much of a. Uh, we used uh, this thing. So it's the login page that we come across. Uh, start with, and this is a sign up page. So we can actually navigate to this here from this, and this is the home page of how it looked like. So this would show the current uh, courses the students have. Uh, currently logged in student uh, student uh, or, or they're currently uh, registered courses and this would display the recommended courses based on the uh, inputs they have provided uh, based on the goals the commitments the interests and all that and so this would be like a set of courses like a set of courses that are shown here um and this would be actually the um one of the course let's say if you just have one course here if you just click on this we'll just uh, move to the um the course page, which would uh, show the, um, you know, a video playback and all uh, different modules that are present within this course. Um, and this would show the progress of the student. Uh, what are the courses that the uh, student has completed and yet to start and in progress student. So we can all do that. And this would show the uh, profile where we could see the uh, student details could be displayed and the interest and goals and uh, whatever the students have uploaded. And this is where we uh, the students can add their comments on the or the based on the course that we have uh, can add their feedbacks. <laughs> it can be used uh, again to feed back into the application for uh, um, for better recommendations. And this is a, da a dashboard. Uh, so this would actually um, you know it's not perfect, but um, this would actually show the analytics uh, for admins to uh, you know uh, which admins can use it to. Um, uh, you know, uh, feed on these data and uh, you know improve the quality of the education uh, overall. Richard, can you open the APIs that we made in Flask? Okay, uh, the VS Code. Yeah, yeah, VS Code. So yeah, uh, from now uh, I will take. Uh, so yeah, we have integrated APIs. We have made the APIs in Flask. Where, like Flask, uh, we have taught in also Mat too, and it is a lightweight. So like uh, like lightweight framework of Django. So we use Flask for making the APIs. Like as APIs needed in, in uh, front end for uh, like showing the data, and uh, like we have different APIs as uh, we can see the login. Uh, first we have login method. So, like login uh, here, uh, uh, go to the models.py. Mm, okay. So, sir, we have models.py and we have uh, database.py also. So, in database.py, we have stored some like data for uh, like for the testing and all the things. Uh, models we have defined, we have uh, defined model like users and courses, learning profile, students, admin. And uh, so these are the models that we have defined uh, for like 
generally we define models for uh, like it is used in HTTP, uh, HTTP requests. And uh, uh, now go to the app pie, ad advert pie. Huh. Uh, sorry, uh, to the APIs, yeah. yeah. So here we have you like we have made something 10 to 12 APIs. We have one login API which will take the uh, like take the input from the students or administration who is logging in and it will check the data. Okay, like uh, if uh, the user is auth authenticated, then it will like it will enter uh, inside the app. Otherwise, it will show like no user found. And we have also like used uh, learning path, uh, student uh, learning path. Uh, like we have some courses like here we don't have that logic like how we will go like how we will recommend the path but uh, like here we has used we have used the random dot sample so from the courses that we have it will like it will give some of the courses that like, like it is not the algo part like uh, we have just made an api for recommending the learning path and uh, uh, come down uh, for courses we have that made like which uh, which courses a student have which courses like for getting all the courses of a student of, uh, like of a particular id <laughs> we have a course like uh, what about the course like what about the courses if you will give the course id it will give uh, if it will give you the like uh, credit of the of the uh, course how much time of the courses how like how we will spend time uh, all this like all the information about the courses and uh, we have we have also have feedback uh, feedback apis so feedback apis are used for like uh, if uh, some student want to give any uh, feedback so we have two apis generally like we have a student feedback api like where, uh, through the student id we can get all the feedback that he has done on a particular subject and we have all the feedbacks also like uh, in a single click we can get all the feedbacks that is uh, uh, given by all the students uh, and we can also show you demo uh, in postman of the APIs. Uh, Richard, can you start the backend server? Yeah, so we um, unfortunately we couldn't uh, integrate both the backend and frontend. Um, so we have a working backend here. So I'll just start off with the uh, app. So this is the entry point. This is where we start with the um, uh, start of the app. So um, we have the APIs here. Uh, so let's say uh, if I just uh, okay. So all right. So this is one of the uh, APIs that we saw. Uh, let's see, fetch course by ID. Um, so you can see the uh, this is the ID that we are passing, and uh, currently it's not logged in. The user is not logged in, so we don't have a. We get this message. Yeah, and uh, we can just uh, you know assuming this is like a, a form that we're filling up, and then we can just simply pass uh, uh, username and password. So this is the post method, which will just start off with the logging, uh, log the user in. And we get a message, a successful message. If it's successful, we get a logged in message. Uh, so there's no authentication working. So it's a simple uh, form data we are, uh, string checking we're doing in the backend. Um, so now, now if we send out a request, we'll see that the, we get a course details, a course ID. Based on that ID, we get some fees. Uh, details that we necessary, um, and then uh, this is actually an admin uh, uh, this thing uh, admin endpoint, and if if I send out a request now, this is unauthorized because we are logged in as student, so this is not going to work. So what we can do is we can just log in as admin here. Now if I log in, yeah, so that's logged in. Now if I access this, this will be available. This uh, this actually shows some basic degree program state uh, stat statistics that can be used uh, for admin to you know, uh, process more data but yeah this is not uh, we have few data here that we have used it and uh, this is where we use the learning path recommendation uh, which will uh, you know uh, as we saw we'll generate random we have a, a set of courses in the database uh, and if you saw the back end we have this that um, the, the random dot yeah, sample. Yeah. So if you see the scale is equal to three. So at a time, uh, I mean, this is not perfect, but yeah, uh, at a time it will uh, take uh, random three courses and then uh, display out the uh, show out the uh, recommendation. So uh, so you can see here B A C is the first uh, uh, we get uh, we getting. So if I send it again, this will be changed again. So D E B. Um, so yeah. Um, so um, 
uh, yeah so this is the that's what we have done up to now and like we are thinking to like insert some algo or uh, like jwt authentication all but we have done only this this much sure. hello sir i'm on okay is that all yeah um yeah that's pretty much it yeah. okay fine so uh, have you documented this apis oh uh, yes in swagger yes we did um, so if is my, is my tab yeah tab visible right yeah yeah so we have this apis here in uh, yaml format we have it and these are the uh, based on these uh, uh, you know based on this uh, output we have designed the apis in the back end uh, as what should be returned right if you execute this uh, this is what should be returned but i tried uh, working it out here but uh, we are getting a core error so um, but yeah um, this is the documentation of apis like at each uh, each api has the, what it is taking argument and what yeah. it is mm, we have a student id so this is a mandatory uh, field that's required uh, based on that it will throw out a response uh, yeah all right fine okay so what was the major challenge in uh, doing this project I mean, anybody um, if you can answer yeah. okay so i will take this um, major challenge first uh, we were thinking about the user stories like uh, what should be the requirements uh, how should software like how a software should work so for that we have uh, like two or three meetings like okay we have to do uh, first like uh, login pages then what this like then uh, like the most of the time we we like talked about the designing part and uh, with the help of like uh, in parallel we are we are also giving like more time to apis like apis are the one like who's fetching the data and it will like uh, doing all the things so yeah so api things and uh, user stories like we have spent uh, like some uh, we have spent more time and uh, it was also some like time taking other than the, all, all the process okay uh, is that all yeah, sure. yeah. Can, uh, want something? Um, yeah, as Sudhanshu said, um, um, designing uh, the first initial milestones would be first and second milestones. Was it a uh, user uh, defined, uh, defi design, defining the users and then um, coming up with the uh, design components of the uh, software was a bit uh, challenging. I mean, not challenging, we took a lot of time in that. Um, we spent uh, quite a few time. Um, mm, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. But then, uh, yeah, after that, it's uh, API designing. All, all was uh, we, we, we. I think we are all uh, experienced with that, so we are able to quickly come up with it. Um, test cases also, we just uh, we had developed it easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. And uh, Richard, I think we also spend a lot of time in thinking that uh, should we use any ML algo to like recommend mm -hmm. courses. We, yeah. So yeah. we are kind of thinking that if we can find any similar kind of data set anywhere in Kaggle, we, we tried to find it also, but we couldn't come up with. So that's why we use this uh, random random thing but uh, other than that i think we uh, going forward if we have like data probably uh, pro properly labeled uh, tabular data we can use uh, any unsupervised algorithm to like suggest student courses based on the courses which are taken by similar kind of students so k means will be an option db scan maybe also one so also we can ap apply this uh, other a priori type of algorithms as well. Okay, all right. I thought somebody one of you would say that integrating backend with the front end was the major challenge because that has not happened yet in the application. Yeah, yes. it was the major challenge, and that's why like it like it was time taking, and uh, <laughs> that's why like we are not able to integrate properly also. Oh. Okay, so all right, so we had some APIs uh, around, but uh, I think the uh, the major focus should have been given on the on this integrating part, right? Yeah. So I from what I see, the the tech stack that you have used is uh, HTML, CSS, and and Flask, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So we might not need any other uh, external framework to relate these two. There could have been uh, directly, you know, linkage should be done. Okay. Anyway, uh, so. Uh, all right, so what is the role of instructor in this application? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, like, you will take this? Sudhanshu, yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. Sudha? Hello? 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, you are taking this. Uh, no, you, you can take it. Okay. So, instructor, uh, we, uh, we basically we have a student and we have we have the instructor. So, like student, uh, like it is generally like our application, our ITM online degree application. Uh, we have given the options to instructor like uploading the data of the students. Like, uh, like we can uh, upload the marks also, like marks and uh, like uh, like. Instructors generally, we have given the like uh, we had made the APIs for uh, uploading the data. It can upload the marks and uh, like some uh, we were thinking about scholarships and all, but like they this was like out of this like we don't have that uh, in our user requirement. So yeah, like generally instructor for instructor we have only made an API for uh, uploading the data like marks and all. So that we have kept at uh, uh, admin. So instructor, if you see a particular instructor, like instructor for a given course, so it is only like uh, it is only mapped to the course. So it is an inherent uh, attribute of the course itself. That's the only uh, role of instructor as of now. OK. All right. So I mean, what happens is uh, instructors as such play a uh, very important role in suggesting the courses to the students. Right. So one of, uh, you know, can, they can act as a parameter in suggesting what courses to be taken, right? So one of the major things that instructors can do can, will that is they can help in recommending courses, right? Okay. So yeah. maybe you can integrate this. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. That's it from my side, Nitin. You can go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, others. So, uh, okay. So as Sudipta mentioned regarding the model, they have tried out the. Uh, so you said that you have tried out finding out the different data set that aligns with your data set, right? And uh, tried out different algorithm like KNN or uh, DB scans. Uh, so I want to know about the data set. Uh, what data set you have used and what data set you were looking for, uh, so that you can implement in your uh, project. So the data set ideally we would look for is suppose in a given timestamp T1, the student has like few courses completed mm -hmm. and what should be the, so our goal was what should be the course the student should take in timestamp T2. So that was our goal. We were trying to find that kind of data set. So uh, we were, were not able to find that kind of data set. So because we have to suggest it so it should be in a sequence that student is completing these courses so after if like suppose uh, after completing mad one if in the in, in in the immediate term if he takes mad two that will be best for him because he will uh, have already all the concept you he'll not forget all the concepts of mad one so this kind of data set we were trying to find but uh, yeah we were unable to find and we were also thinking that like if uh, subjects like we have the more times right like mm -hmm. if two subjects are like want something 70 hours okay. uh, so if we will take su four subjects and uh, mm -hmm. we will like we have to spend more time so mm -hmm. our grades will be less right so like we were thinking such a combination like uh, it like uh, there is a sweet spot between time and the marks like uh, uh, generally we can get the uh, like how much time we should spend so like we can get also a decent marks, marks so also. that's why we also thought about like uh, sending form to the students where they can fill out like uh, the amount of time they can spend in the particular term so depending on that like uh, we thought of curating the recommended courses for each and every student okay so what i got from your inputs is that uh, you have different courses taken by student at different time is but time is time between your different terms right uh, and uh, time is spent on uh, i mean how much time they can spend on each courses and how much is recommended by the instructor that you have used for your data set okay. right so for now you didn't apply any algorithm so it's like uh, different options available for the students not a recommendation right yeah Okay, so uh, if I talk about the data set and if you want to uh, to bring in some other features like let's say uh, the marks they have obtained or say the marks that previous students obtained when they have taken that particular combinations. Mm -hmm. uh, so how, how you will bring out such features in your uh, data set? So if, well, if you want to build like that, so if you want to consider so I'm, uh, yeah, if we want to consider this fronts that uh, in a given particular course, what was the, suppose what was the average marks, okay? 
and uh, for a given particular combination what was the average marks for the students so in that for front if you think then our tabular data should have multiple uh, yes. so it, it should have multiple categories so categories in the sense so there are courses like course a b c and there will be might be some other combination which will be b c d okay. so this each thing will represent a row and in each row there will be given marks corresponding to that combination attributes for that so hmm. we could have had if we could if we could have some kind of uh, that sort of data or, uh, i think or, that that data we can build if we have the raw data from that by manipulating that we can build some uh, 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 can you think of some other features that uh, that will be helpful for your recommendation system uh, so one of these is uh, for different combinations what are the average marks for different courses this is one of the feature Mm -hmm. uh, can you think of some other features that you can bring in? Uh, so, which which will be shown to students? Uh, that you 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 should use for your recommendation system. Sir, one time you have taken right. Uh, uh, we can take also time uh, like uh, how much time we have to spend in each course. Like okay. we have four courses, right? So uh, we should take a combination of such four courses. Like we have a like we have to like if two courses are highly consuming then two other courses should be like take as com like from the other two courses it should take the last time okay does your model or does your system take care of the background of a student like uh, whether uh, whether he or she is a student or a working professional or a full-time degree he's doing full-time degree or doing some other degree along with that such kind of uh, 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 does your mod system has such kind of features? No, the student model doesn't have uh, like this few particular thing, uh, sir, that you mentioned. Oh. But yes, the, that would be helpful. Oh, in, so uh, we have uh, time commitment that mm -hmm. how much time a student can provide that we have. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, time in time commitment it can be covered, right? Like if uh, mm -hmm. if there is if a p p person is having a job, then definitely he will he he can spend like. Uh, not yeah, time well, commitment is different thing and the background yeah they are correlated some some uh, in some semester, day. Yeah. Uh, but like let's say okay yeah but they may be correlated but you can bring down those features and see how uh, that those things work yeah, we yeah. also take yes. note of like uh, uh, like what they like like uh, their interest and uh, yeah, passion right. so with that also uh, the yeah. their own curated recommend courses will be updated. yeah nice okay. uh, that's all from my side others you can continue thank you okay then all right i think we can move to the next group uh, Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Bye. All right. So, which one is the next group? Uh, group number twenty-two. Okay. Group number twenty-two. There, there. You can start off with your presentation. I'll be sharing my screen. Good evening, everyone. I hope it is visible to all. Yes, it is visible. OK. Um, just leave. Just leave, you are mute. Uh, hello, am I audible now? Yes. OK. So uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Justine Kaur, and this is team number 22. And we are here to present our software engineering course project that is the Learning Path Recommendation System. Uh, our team consists of Anchit, Anhat, Jay, Rohit, and myself. Uh, all of us are BTEC computer science final year students. And uh, this was our first collaborative project. Uh, and this project showcase today is a result of our collaborative effort. So uh, we used the technologies uh, we know from our MAD1 and MAD2 projects. We uh, kept it as uh, we uh, used Flask and Vue.js as we all knew it. 
um so uh so we know that the project was divided into six milestones and each milestone represented a phase of our software development life cycle uh so now my team members will be discussing how we approached every milestone and how we worked during the milestone over to you jay yeah so hi everyone this is jay so basically in our first milestone we identified the user requirement uh, we uh, overall Uh, collaborated and constructed a shared document each of our team member would uh, identify the potential use stories and crafted different use stories as well using the smart principles um, and also we had proper contributions from each and every one identified specific and measurable uh, user stories which can which are relevant and according to the a uh, course and we also uh, use gmeet as our discussion portal for collaborative meeting and we also finalized and refined our uh, document as per our user requirement so uh, over to you justin for the second milestone okay uh, so for the second milestone we had to uh, define the storyboards and the wireframe so at first we decided on what web pages are supposed to be created and how a user will access an application that uh, in what sequence are they going to access the web pages and how they will jump from one web page to another based on that we uh, decided on what are the potential wireframes of our application uh, and uh, then our team divided that uh, who will create what storyboards and the wireframes we basically used canva for creating the storyboards and figma for the uh, wireframes Okay. Okay. Moving on to milestone three, we started by setting up Jira for our project scheduling and management for database. We implemented it based on the schema uh, presented on the next slide, defining the models for user roles, courses, prerequisites, etc., as well as relationship in between them. We then mapped them to the core. Uh, we mapped out the core components for our app like the user management for handling authentication and permissions uh, file management for securely storing the user data course management for course detail and ca cataloging uh, enrollment and analytics for the academic insight a feedback system to collect the students rating and reviews for each course how they feel about that course and what was up and Uh, okay i would uh, like to request anat to explain the milestone for what we did in that yeah. okay so after designing everything now actually comes the uh, creating the project itself creating the apis uh, etc so one interesting with thing we noted initially was that the designs we created were generic for uh, they were application independent they were implementation independent but later on when we came to actually design the project using like flask and view uh, some of the models were uh, starting to change for example uh, this database schema a lot of thing had to be added a lot of thing had to be removed uh, for it to work uh, a little bit more efficiently with flask so and sql alchemy also so we decided uh, we worked on that we created the models corresponding to that then uh, the models implemented the databases then uh, we each of us divided the apis uh, in our project so we created all the apis for uh, the requirements i will showcase these to you later on in the project demo so this is just a screenshot of the uh, thunder client window that we have testing where we have tested the api itself so in milestone 4 uh, we moved from design phase to actually implementation phase a lot of things changed in between both of these things a lot of we had to think a lot of things uh, again and a lot of challenges were faced during these things uh, i'll move uh, then comes the testing part i'll uh, uh, give to rohit explain this milestone okay yeah so it yeah uh, so for testing effort we created exhaustive test cases for every uh, every endpoint that we had uh, uh, for every single endpoint that we created we documented these um, thoroughly with uh, the expected inputs expected outputs and the error codes that and the codes that we were expecting response codes uh, we also generated uh, we also created pytest uh, pytest cases for all of these test cases and uh, in terms of integrate uh, these were uh, this is what we did for unit testing and uh, after we were done with uh, creating our front end which is part of which was uh, part of milestone 6 uh, we tested the front end uh, during that uh, that period of our project development so back to you anand okay so milestone 6 was actually 
the final integration, the final design of the application, especially the front end part, because by, uh, by now our APIs were ready. The major problem we had in this phase was uh, all of us being BTEC students, we all had our exams when Milestone 6 started. But still, we uh, coded everything, we uh, did everything. I'll start with the demo of the project first, then I'll explain the Milestone 6 EP presentation part. So starting the project demo right now. I'll explain the full uh, user uh, control flow in this uh, by start creating a new user. First of all, a user is created, let us say, uh, a test user one. Email address test four five six and the rate email dot com password ABCD. So after the user has created their registration, uh, we have asked them to upload uh, update their profile. What their profile contains right now, their current degree level. For example, I'll say I'm in uh, foundation level. What they want their subjects to be recommended like. For example, I can have, uh, I want to do programming first, I want to do data science first, or both of them. Let us decide to do both of them first. How many term, uh, how many courses they want in each term? Let us say I want four courses in this term. I ha uh, We have also thought of the possibility that let us say some students have already done some of the courses and they are registering to the app later on. So for example, uh, I have taken uh, these two courses, let us say, I have computational thinking and English one in this term and I have completed mathematics one with the marks 76 and uh, statistics for data science one with the marks 75. So we can up, uh, update the profile from here. Once the profile is updated, we come to the recommendation part. So this page shows the home page of the student profile, shows the recommendations. We have current courses which the student has taken in this term. The recommended courses, I will come to back to this part uh, later on. And uh, these, uh, the recommendations for the next term are shown here. Recommendations uh, for the upcoming all the terms, if you follow this app's recommendation, is shown in a directed acyclic graph in this manner here. Uh, okay. So individual course uh, can also be clicked upon to get the information. Uh, for example, in computational thinking, this shows the uh, course information. Every course has a difficulty rating associated with it, which the students will give through feedback. Uh, I'll come to the feedback part later on also. So the recommendations are calculated based on these difficulty ratings as well as some other algorithm, which I'll show again. Every course has some instructors in it. Uh, a student can give feedback uh, in this course. For example, this is my feedback and corresponding difficulty rating and they can uh, submit it. We have taken care uh, to put a possible uh, feedback messages also so that the user gets to know uh, what they are doing in real time. We can view the feedback, user can view the feedback. Every course can have at most one feedback. So in this way, the student can access all these courses. This page shows the possible, uh, all possible courses in our degree, uh, which is registered with the backend right now. So this was the uh, user uh, front end page. Now let us come to the admin part. Hmm. Admin is the overall administrator of the entire app. Admin will control two things, which are the courses present in the entire degree, which are the various uh, members, which I'll show you in the uh, application. So on the admin dashboard, they have some basic statistics that how many students are there, how, uh, what are the courses, which are, uh, what, uh, which are the courses which are added. Uh, here comes the actual courses part. So admin can see that this is mathematics, data science, difficulty rating of this course, who is the instructor of this course. They can change the instructor as well as the name of the course. The rest of the things admin cannot change and instructor can change. So uh, admin can add new courses also from here only. Uh, this shows all the foundation course, diploma course. Uh, we can, we have used data tables here. So we can also see a respective number of things we want to see. Uh, this page shows all the administrators. First of all, these are the admins of the application. They are the overall managers of the application, as I've told you. Second members in our application are course team members. These are those people who will, end, uh, who will handle individual courses. So again, just like with the courses panel, we can ed edit these. Uh, course team members, we can change their access level. We can delete them. They will convert to a student. 
we can add new administrators also from the already registered uh, email ids so uh, the third entity is the management people they can see uh, feedbacks about each subject as well as some basic statistics about the overall application so that they can uh, De and they can uh, make the entire degree go, go in a particular direction as they want. So this was the admin panel. Now I will come to the uh, CTN member panel. So this is the course team member panel. Course team member uh, has the access to only those subjects who they are already a uh, instructor of. So we have uh, these shows the list of courses this CTM member is a, is an instructor of they can go to an individual course see the average difficulty level what the students are saying about their application uh, saying about their course so they can improve their course or change their respective things they can edit the course details itself from here because i told you earlier that admin can only add new courses with basic details the course instructor who has actually uh, deeper knowledge about what the course is about should be able to edit the rest of the things. So this shows uh, the design is almost the same as that of the, the student courses page. So individual course is visible here. Uh, next, I'll show the management portal. So this is the management portal. Again, this was the same as that of admin portal. We plan to do a lot of things in this management portal, but due to the time constraints we had, uh, this was the only thing that was left from our side uh, that we were unable to complete visually and as well as from the uh, some backend portion that, that was left incomplete. So this page is complete that management can see feedback. Again, we have used the same templates because why change something that is already good. And on the dashboard, we plan to include here many graphs and such related statistics, but those got out of the uh, in the timing issues we had. So the entire application is in the backend. The entire application is designed using Flask and uh, JWT. Flask, uh, we have created the APIs using authentication using JWT. For the front end, we have used Vue, Beautify. We have not used any third party templates or anything else. Everything is designed in house. Uh, we have designed everything uh, in by sitting in long GMIT hours. So we have. Uh, distributed the directory structure of our application is distributed so can we can we can collaborate easily like admin uh, all administrative things are in here all authentication things are in here similarly everything is distributed in both the front end as well as the back end of our application so we have collaborated using the github uh, like we have done 74 commits as of today we have pushed some commits recently also because there were some bugs the firm, some fixes were there also so uh, all four of us were the collaborators of this project. Each of them have done almost entirely equal work and uh, everyone was important for this entire project. So I'll come back to the presentation now. So this is the tree structure, just a basic application structure of our application, which I have shown. So a recommendation algorithm. Earlier, we thought of going with a, some ML technique, but later on we decided to uh, first, give it a try to basic algorithm. Then if the time remains, we'll shift to ML. The reason was for this was, first of all, we did not have the data. Data could be generated, but uh, we wanted the basic structure of the app to be built first. Then we'll come to the single recommendation algorithm, which can be changed. Since the app is modular in structure, the entire uh, recommendation can be system can be changed by changing just one function. So. This is the algorithm we implemented in our application. Uh, if you want to go through it, I'll uh, go through it later on. Uh, uh, okay. So coding, I have shown that there are various code files and etc. I have shown the various uh, UI screens of this app. So I'll give it the stage to Jaslin to discuss these things. Jaslin. Okay. Uh, so this project basically provided us a, a learning environment where we not only gained proficiency in specific tools but uh, like we like tools like jira and github and flask which all helped us to collaborate and honed our skills in teamwork and how we can collaborate together 
and how we manage the project and these uh, how we uh, it helped us know how to document uh, uh, how to document our software how to use github properly how to manage everything and these experiences will surely contribute to our growth as uh, we are aspiring software engineering and engineer engineers and uh, it will help uh, us in our growth uh, and although it was a great learning experience we uh, faced many challenges and the first challenge for us was that all of us were very new in a collaborating setting and we didn't know how to collaborate remotely and how to use github and stuff like that and github also uh, caused many challenges because there were some delays and how to merge uh, our files it it caused a lot of issues for us and uh, a major issue for us was that all of us had exams at the same time and it caused a lot of issues while in in communication and uh it was a less than ideal time for us to build the uh, project so uh, we we tried our best to create a project that is helpful to i mean and that can help students in a way that it should be so so this concludes our presentation for the project if you have any questions regarding the presentation or the demo itself please feel free to ask i'll show my on it i'll show it on my screen okay all right so first of all um, i mean i would like to compliment uh, for the project this is a very good work okay uh, so uh, okay so as far as the application uh, uh, you know application and the flow is concerned uh, it is a good work okay now about recommendation we'll think about it uh, now one thing that i observed uh, was uh, the recommendations that were shown for the next term or the subsequent terms were mm -hmm. all having four courses uh, right yes so i mean one uh, thing has to be kept in mind here the student who wants to wants a recommendation uh, not only looks for which courses but how many courses to be taken right that is mm -hmm. one of the major uh, uh, concerns that student have okay so that so, we, that has to be also implemented uh, so in uh, since our application was basically designed to work on immediate upcoming term first so mm -hmm. we have decided to uh, we have asked the student that how many maximum they, courses they want so let us say that the uh, okay so on the recommendation page it is showing the four courses right if i change it on my profile that i want only two courses to take in the upcoming term the recommendations are also changed for two courses although this is they should be changed for every term but the student has option to update the profile at any day so we thought that this would work okay fine all right one one more thing that uh, can be added uh, is uh, the background of the student i'm i'm not sure if that is added uh, in the you know <laughs> because that would help the recommendation or direct the recommendation in the right way there are mm -hmm. so many who who are you know maybe not from the programming background and would want the recommendations according to that so that can be added all right okay. uh, i i heard one of you mentioning that you wanted to make a lot of other changes in the admin part i would like to know what those changes are or what those implementations were Okay, so uh, I was talking about this one, the management, IIT management part. So, gmail.com. So this was uh, the page I was talking about. We mm -hmm. wanted to implement analytics here. Analytics like uh, what is the average uh, number of students in each courses? Uh, what is the details about how each course is doing well? Because we have taken marks of every student. Na? So marks based analytics. Some we have also taken credits of every uh, subject. So some credits that. Uh, how each course fares, which course is uh, having better difficulty score, which course is having uh, poorer difficulty score. Uh, these things were supposed to be here on the management portal. So the entire management team can change the, uh, the direction of the degree as per their wishes. Okay, fine. Uh, moving on to the, you know, the implementation part. So you have uh, used APIs, right? Yes. Uh, so apart from students and instructors being the, the majority of the users, who would uh, use API or how would it be used? So I think uh, there were four major users of the application, students, instructors, admin, and the course team members. Uh, they were instructors only. So apart from those, I think 
uh, third party websites who want to know the details about our, uh, our degree they can access the feedbacks from our api also uh, if okay so this application there is one admin they are updating the course list so what if some other application some third party application want to get the updated list of courses they can uh, ask us for the corresponding access and we can give it to them so mm. almost everything is accessible uh, to them that is based on this as long as it is not confidential data like students data or individual course team members data and so with the change in the the algorithm and the database i'm pretty sure this can be applied to most degree structures in any in any university or institution yeah okay how about testing uh, do you use rohit place for testing rohit yeah what was the question uh, you use apis for testing or any other way of testing um so by coding uh, all of us uh, conduct uh, unit tests through uh, our uh, postman or thunder client and uh, uh, for in terms of automated testing we created uh, pi test cases for all the unit tests that we uh, we had done so that it can also be uh, applied through pi the majority of the testing was uh, by individual member who was coding the back end coding so they were responsible for using thunder client and postman but mm -hmm. for automated testing we have also uh, implemented we implemented pi test test cases but a lot of things changed in the past 5 6 days so probably those pi test won't pass right now but the application works entirely there is not a single error in the entire packet okay so let's say if a new collaborator adds uh, you know gets added to your this particular application or your group mm -hmm. and wants to test your application based on only the front end <laughs> okay uh, can you suggest a way how to do that uh based on only the front end yeah right like they have only access to the front end yes and uh, the code part or the user uh, using part i mean uh anything it can be yeah so i mean i have, i would be looking at the test that or the data that comes from the back end okay so first of all we have the apis they can use a thunder client corresponding apis are available apart from that Uh, postman uh, etc also they can directly use the app itself they can create we can create dummy users for the app they can directly use the app if there is any error in the app, workflow of the app they can see the errors directly because there are corresponding uh, success and failure messages displayed on the app the console window also shows all the errors that may come in the application as long as the backend server is reachable so i think that should be possible through this okay all right okay so apart from the technical aspect of the project just one uh, suggestion i have uh, as far as the slides are concerned do not put too much information okay so okay. currently what has happened is uh, we i mean i have a fairly large monitor but still i could not uh, look at the models because there was a lot of data and models on the right okay okay so <laughs> something uh, to look at because when you are presenting you mu you must speak more with whatever you know few words you have on the screen mm -hmm. all right so okay. okay so that was just a trivial uh, thing that i would like to suggest but yeah that's it from me uh, uh, uh nitin please go ahead if you have any questions yeah, sure yes sure okay yeah the first thing your dashboard was looking very clean uh, looks a very good work there uh so one suggestion i want to give and others was also talking about that um, so uh, for now your model or your system is using uh, or student himself is opting for number of courses right how many courses he wants to choose for the next time right rather than student himself choosing the number of courses let your model itself let, uh, let the student know how many courses he should opt for because it okay. may vary depending upon uh, Uh, his performance past performance and uh, even on the his background his or her background right so mm -hmm. let your model itself uh, uh, let the student know how many courses he should uh, choose and what combination he should go for he or she should go for right, right. so you said that uh, you didn't apply any models because you don't have access to the data now so how your uh, system is recommending the courses okay so we have implemented this algorithm i'll show you this one uh, i'll put it on full screen so i'll start from the start point basically we are getting all the pending courses for the current logged in student we are filtering the courses according to the level uh, the student is at for example foundation diploma or degree okay then 
we are calculating something called a capability score capability mm-hmm. score is the corresponding difficulty score of the subject multiplied by the uh, marks of the previous uh, subject the student has completed this and gives us some define, how do you are defining the difficulty of a course uh, this it is defined using the feedbacks that we have taken in the entire application the okay, other so student you, you have uh, used feedback and yes. uh, based on the feedback you define the difficulties uh, yes 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 difficulty is, of the courses uh-huh. and so, and how you are using those feedback to define the difficulties i mean did you use any statistical model or some other things to define that oh, no, students are giving their ratings like they rate based on okay a okay so model. based on ratings you are defining the difficulty of the courses uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> okay go on so we have removing all the prerequisite and uh, courses which the student can't complete because their prerequisite mm-hmm. prerequisite don't match okay. then we are filtering the courses based on the uh, selection that student that they, they want to do uh, diploma courses for sciences or both of mm-hmm. them okay. then if the number of courses that the recommendation has given zero then we change these parameters that we have just discussed above okay so after we get some recommendations uh, let us say we have gotten uh, some 10 20 courses okay mm-hmm. so we create some combinations from those courses all the possible combinations that can be created mm-hmm. okay, okay? if there is only one combination such one such combination we return okay. it as it is because there is only okay. one combination that the student can do let us say there are five seven combinations of three subjects each in the next term okay. so we calculate average difficulty level of each combination okay. the difficulty score we collected through the feedbacks okay. we compare it with the capability of the student and okay. choose some subset of those courses if that subset is again equal to 1 then we return that subset if it is greater than 1 we have decided to choose one of them randomly okay and what is capability score so let us say i have completed four subjects with corresponding marks that we have taken in the user interface so capability score is uh, if i completed mathematics 1 for me uh, my marks let us say is 90 and the difficulty of mathematics 1 is let us say 10 out of 10 so capability score is defined that uh, my marks scaled according to the difficulty level of the course uh, and taken an average for all courses so this basically gives us an idea that for example uh, i did i earned 90 marks in mathematics whose difficulty level is 10 so i must be very good at maths i earned 90 marks in let us say system commands whose difficulty level is 2 so i may be good i may be bad i don't know so those are calculated using averaging the other capability scores okay yeah so your features look good but uh, as you don't have the data you cannot implement the model i understand that mm-hmm. uh, but for now uh, this is just number of uh, number of possible combinations he can out for and out of yeah. those it's only looking for the dif- uh, difficulties of those courses and then suggesting Or, or recommending of the courses. Yeah. So, so if you try, uh, let's say you have access to the data, mm-hmm. the previous student data set uh, data, and now you want to implement or uh, any statistical model or machine learning models. What mm-hmm. what models you can think of? Mm-hmm. Can I say I, like uh, yes. yeah? So like we 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 are thinking for K N N first of all, like uh, because uh, we can sort them out on the basis of different courses as well, or maybe K means even. Uh, by making clusters and assigning each and every one to different uh, courses as well. So these two are uh, algorithms which I was thinking particularly when in the beginning of our milestone as the, well. Yeah. But the yeah. problem with these algorithms themselves is they require uh, when mm. the number of users are ap- of our application become very large, mm. the calculating part will be. <coughs> I'm sorry, the calculating part will become very tiresome. So. i would suggest instead of using some artificial neural network or reinforcement learning mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. so that uh, the system can be updated with every new feedback that we get for a course uh, sentiment analysis can also be done yeah. based on the feedbacks yeah sentiment analysis okay so what uh, what model sentiment analysis uses uh, i think it was naive base multinomial okay any other model 
uh, see if we are using uh, sentiment analysis we may, uh, mostly uh, depend upon subjectivity and polarity we can use different models for classification if we are just uh, predicting a negative and a positive segments uh, sentiment so okay. logistic random forest even decision tree could work so we need to use a voting classifier to find out the max maximum like uh, which model would give accuracy on our, our data and need to pre process all the text beforehand as well to process like how the scores can be good for that particular student or maybe bad and we can we also have to add the parameter of difficulty for uh, from uh, by gathering the data from the students as well so this are some two to three important features which we need for uh, processing sentiment analysis okay one final question uh, what data you want from instructor side to better your recommendation system like the feedback the students are giving for the courses this is the one we would expect yeah, feedback are from the student side what feedback what like, you uh, want from the instructor side okay so instructor so, has <laughs> been with the corresponding degree for a lot of terms so they can give us an overall idea about how a subject fares in the current uh, uh, scenario for example let us say uh, let us say that there is a course on php right now php is not in demand so a lot of students won't even have heard about php so the instructor may know about this and they can give their corresponding input that php may be a difficult subject for you since it is a uh, not well known subject in today's market like and another metric that we can get from instructors suppose we have a new course that we don't have any student uh, data available so we can just say what uh, we can uh, get a, a perceived uh, what they think the difficulty of the course would be for the students which can be used for uh, calculations of and the interesting aspect would be that instructor themselves are well versed in many courses yeah. the students will perceive the course based on their background the instructor may know more accurately about the difficulty of the course than the student themselves but at the end of the day it is the opinion of students that should matter because recommendation is for the students and uh, also one thing if we get an uh, historical uh, uh, data from the like uh, this uh, management so what we can do is we can categorize by let's say uh, semester wise data and we can see if there is an update in the course and how how is the feedback actually uh, changing after the updated course that could also help us in uh, bet uh, to better the recommender system as well so that is one of the parameter like historical data and like is the course is updated after that or not uh, after a semester or not and then we can understand the views as well so this is also one of the critical aspect also adding to this like others were saying like uh, this degree basically has students of different backgrounds like programming and programming so if you get that like how the non programming students are performing how where they are facing any difficulty which course they are which course is difficult to them that also that data could help us to predict for them also like mm -hmm. how can they perform well yeah okay yeah yeah that's all from my side uh, others sivan you can continue uh, yes you can move to our next group uh, group number 23 sure thank you you can go ahead yeah good night Oh, uh, hello. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are audible. Am I also audible? Yes, you are also audible. So, um, can you just present the screen, please? Yeah. Uh, please switch on your cameras if it is possible for you. Hello, instructors. My, my name is Kali Gurai, and my teammate is Abhishek Rajapati. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I am from Pune, and uh, currently doing this course as my main focus. And uh, right now, like uh, the project was a bit difficult for us because a lot of things went wrong at the beginning. Because like uh, mm -hmm. we had five teammates at the beginning, and now it's just us two. Two of us, because. After like the f first two or three weeks, that is after mine, so two or three, I guess three or four teammates decided that they will not be pursuing the this course anymore. So they left. So that left us as like 
the only two members in the team, so which made it kind of difficult for us to come up with a very well versed or complete project in whole. Uh, but we so made the, an effort. So we will now start with the uh, project presentation. Uh, Kali, can you start from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. So our our project, like we decided to go with an ERP recommendation. So initially, our first primary goal was ad identifying or understanding what a user needs or what a user wants from from this application. So our primary users were students, uh, while while the secondaries were administrators and admins or staffs. So as if a student is going to go into a portal or of any application, so what does he need? He, he needs the data in which about the courses he's enrolled in. So he also needs, when he's enrolling into a new course, recommendations as to what course he should pick or while picking which course he wants to enroll, the feedback of other students, which helps him to understand that whether he should pick this course or we should, whether he should pick some other course based on what he wants to do. And maybe he has completed a course and he wants to give feedback on how good that was or how well that course suited him. These are the things a student would want from like when he goes into an application like this. And while an admin would be uh, a member of the teaching staff or a, a member of, let's say, the school or the people running the application, so they would want to update the data of the students to understand what the students are doing, their marks, their individual data, and all that. So initially, after identifying users and user stories, we had to plan out or think. This is like doing after my insult to three, so we had to think well, and that's why we decided to that. First, we need to convert surveys to gather the requirements and the understanding as to what a student needs or what an admin needs from an application. After understanding and after asking people, we decided to like make a list key. Uh, this these things are required in the application, and these things are not based on user stories and user recommendation, defining and understanding what we want from the application and what we do not want from the application and manage like the entire after that after that we decided on our, after our understanding we decided to chalk out the components which we will be using in the respective application that is the pages the ui the things which we which will be building up the application that's just like like in there will be a home page or a dashboard where the user logs in as a user or an admin logs in as an admin. So that is the courses page where the user can pick the courses during when, when he's enrolling into a course or he can look at the courses he has already chosen. The recommendations upon enrolling all the present courses, the course pages, the admin pages for the admin, the pages for the user respectively. So after that, after defining and understanding the, what we want to work with, we thought of initial scope or the of the functionalities which we want from the application. So we highlighted the major functionalities, which were the features that allow users to register accounts, the basic uh, login and logout. The up, the application should allow like uh, users to pick new courses, give them recommendations, show them feedbacks upon choosing these courses respectively. Uh, the, uh, the application should be allowed to give records, details of the courses, the data in the courses, the assignments, and the coursework of the courses. A student can log in and pick these. On identifying the course functionalities, we need, we need to design and think of a user interface, which which would implement them in a better in a better manner. So, upon understanding and looking at this, we took we took. Another step, which was designing and looking into the database design, because to integrate, we need a database which, have, which will have all the data and the API is integrated. So we decided to go with the structure of the database, which is which were the to identifying the schema, the ER diagrams, which 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 all features which you want to use as a primary key or a secondary key or as a foreign key, which features you want to link to which parts of the application respectively, and after. After we thought of the UI and the database and the respective APIs, which we will use to integrate the database and the application, the final step was, was thinking of test, testing, like uh, testing for features which, which, were, which would work or which would not work to look at and test the basic functionalities, the templates to test the various functions, uh, check if the whole 
system as a whole was executing and identifying test box. This was the initial plan and thought we had initially. So after that, we before building the application or designing APIs, we needed to think of all the functionalities we wanted to for it to be done. Like what an admin should be able to do. We should be able to add modify delete information of the students enrolled in the course. He should be able to modify delete information regarding marks, the course the students opt. An admin should be able to print the mark sheet to the students, but the students should be able to choose their courses based on recommendations. They, they should be able to give feedback of the courses they are enrolled in and, and to view the, all the things which they have done. And after we design and we thought of what we needed to do, then came the implementation and designing of APIs. Yeah, I'll take it over from here now. Uh, during the implementation part, like our whole philosophy for uh, API was like as from the beginning, like where we identified the key components on the problem statement and other people. Uh, we took the key components from there, uh, such as just, okay, we want a course page, we want a user page, and we want uh, a home page, etc. Then we wanted to know what are the functions required for each and every page and each and every uh, component. And uh, what are the uh, successful uh, output that we wanted and what the error outcome what we wanted. So from there, we identified a uh, major of three components, like the course, the review, and the user. And the users will have uh, two more uh, child components, which is the admin and the student. Uh, and for that, uh, now the part was where we were converting the requirements to API and API endpoint. Uh, for all the endpoints, we had obviously the CRUD operations such as the create, uh, removing, updating, and everything. So in the end, we decided on these uh, few uh, like API endpoints. And we added some extra endpoints such as the find by tags and find by name uh, in the get. Because if for searching recommendations, we added a certain uh, tag uh, to every course. And if a certain tag was there, uh, we wanted to add uh, recommendations based on those tags itself. Uh, for the review, uh, the review application, uh, it, it was done only by uh, the users, to, uh, users, that is the students uh, of the application. And uh, we also added some uh, uh, extra uh, put uh, operations over there for uh, easier upward and uh, downward uh, 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 this was done by other users, not the original user, because sometimes some people might actually give false reviews or sometimes it might just be one off. So how much the people actually found it useful, the review, that was done by upwards and downwards. Uh, for uh, the user endpoints, we uh, created some uh, basic structures such as the admin, the student, and if uh, the admins are from the uh, organization side. They just wanted to add a massive list from the beginning. So they could create a list and just uh, post it into the application using the uh, post like use, uh, user created list. Or if it's just the users uh, or just the students or just the admin administrators, they could use their uh, respective uh, API endpoints. Uh, uh, then finally, we come to the database models uh, in the implementation. Uh, so since we started using Flask, SQL, Alchemy, uh, we had certain uh, models, basically. So the base model parameters for user was just a username and password. That's it. And the expected child parameters for each was for admin. Uh, it will be the same as the user, but will have a higher uh, priorities or higher access uh, abilities. Whereas the child of or whereas the student uh, models will also have extra such as uh, their hobbies, their their own uh, about you page, or say the courses they have currently taken or they want to take, etc. So uh, this is the one that we created over here, where it is just username and password for the base user, same way for the admin, but it is just now a child of the user. And for student, it was a bit big. So like roll number about you, the current courses enrolled and uh, the courses enrolled in the past. Uh, then we come to the course uh, model, which is uh, in here we decided that, OK, how exactly we want to implement the recommendation system. So for this, we have two uh, parameters here, description tags and recommended tags. So description tags are the tags 
of the course itself. So for example, if it, the course is introduction to Python programming, so the discussion tags will have Python and programming, something like that. And recommendation tags, so what, if you're taking this course, then what will be the recommended uh, tags for the courses that you want? So programming will be one, say for, uh, aside from Python, you will also require JS. So recommended tags will also have uh, JS as an additional tag. Uh, then came the review model. So over here, it was just a simple uh, block of text. So that will be the description. The idea of the student that was uh, that I posted the uh, review, the rating of the review itself. So how the uh, review was useful for the people or not, uh, uh, by done by upwards and downwards. So for this implementation, we required some association tables and extra models in order to create this list of uh, because SQL SQLite does not uh, have any list or array uh, as a uh, data type, so we had to create extra models and uh, uh, association tables. So for just tag, it was just a tag name, and uh, for hobbies, it was just a student ID which wanted the hobby, yearly plans so or year, current year. So current year wanted the courses which are planned for that year, the uh, what all hobbies they wanted to pursue, and the student ID of the yearly plan. In the end, uh, we could not exactly implement the front end part of it since Kolik had his end term exams, but I could implement the back end of it, but uh, I can't exactly test it without the front end. Uh, any questions, sir? Okay, is that all? Yes, sir. So, uh, so there is no application to look at at this point. Uh, no, sir. We could not uh, implement the application. So we okay. do have like for it, just like the backend code, and we have a, a user screen, but we don't. We haven't been able to link both of them. Yeah. Okay. So have you created APIs? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So anyway, we can test them and see if uh, they are giving some answers. Uh, not that I know of. Sir. But I see you have documented some of the APIs, right? Uh, yes, sir. So can you test uh, with the documentation itself? Uh, not that I know, sir. Uh, we could not just do anything with property over here at the time. OK. All right, so I mean, uh, so there is a lot of code, right? There are some models defined. Uh, hopefully, there are some controllers so something at the you know even on the control uh, on the terminal something on the screen oh uh, i think that so according to the aesthetic this is the back end part of it like so this is what i was able to come up with but like uh, as i said that we do not have time to test if this exactly worked or not uh, because we don't have uh, any like at least i did not know of any tools it could actually just uh, pass the uh, uh, parameters and the bo object body and get some uh, response and uh, result. Okay. You, uh, so any one of you have completed MAD1 or MAD2 courses? Uh, yes, sir. I have completed both MAD1 and MAD2 course. Uh, and that was how I was able to, you know, uh, make the back end part of it. So because it was from there, I took. Uh... Okay. So, I mean, uh, at that point, uh, we could have simply had things like Thunder Client or Postman to test the APIs. And it's not about writing the test case, the proper test cases as such. But uh, if there is an endpoint created, well, how is this endpoint behaving? Is it throwing some error? Is it giving some status codes? Um, that can be checked uh, with Postman or uh, even the Swagger APIs documentation that you have written, right? Yes, sir. I, we did use Swagger API, but like, uh, over there, like uh, it was very uh, like upfront. So if I wanted to uh, use the API model of it, so if I wanted to test the API, it was just having an object body. And if we had a wrong type base, so if it was integer expected and give it string, it gave appropriate uh, errors of it. But uh, in an actual setting and an actual uh, implementation, we could not actually test it. Okay. All right. 
so uh, what are your uh, next steps i mean how would you go about uh, making this work so if, if 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 to make this work so like we have a uh, we have a front end and we have a back end so the first thing would be to link both of them we need to test the apis using let like, as you said thunder cloud client or postman so based on the responses we would have to link them the responses and based on the responses we need to add the respective applications and with various changes to the website according to that okay and how are you planning to create the uh, front end i mean what tech tech stack would you use so the front end is we have cre- i have created a front end it's, it's not that i have not uh, i the, the front end i created using react i did not u- use view i just did in react application with tailwind css as for the styling oh. Mm-hmm. So in the future, you would actually use UGS and uh, Beautify for like the aesthetics and stuff like that, and uh, the, uh, the the communication between will be done by Axios, which is like a REST API, and uh, with that, it will actually be easier to test if the function if the endpoints are working or not, because in the console of the uh, web browser, we can actually uh, we would have actually sent the error messages or the success messages. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, uh, why do you need Axios? Uh, to like, uh, it is actually a very easy implementation of uh, the REST API. But you're if using just... Flask, right? For back. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so, so you're creating your own APIs or resource uh, URLs using Flask, right? So uh, I don't so so see the uh, use of Axios. In, so the Axios will be used in Vue.js side, so not on the backend side. Okay, but the data is coming from the backend, right? Whatever you show on the screen would be coming from backend. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. It will be coming from the backend, uh, and the database will be in SQL like three. So, if, if you're using backend, Flask is backend. Like, if if you're using, uh, like initially, right now we have the frontend in React, which is which we try to link with the Flask application to black, which we were unable to do. So the idea is to go to view. Then, if it's not actual, then we'll just use fetch calls to to call the APIs and. Test them and then call them accordingly. Okay, fine. All right. I think uh, that would be it from my end. Uh, Nitin. Yes, your sure. honor. So, uh, did you try uh, try out any uh, machine learning model or statistical model for your recommendations? Uh, no, sir. The model we decided to go for like a tag based recommendation model. So each course will have like. Or tags based upon it, say programming, or uh, and the name, or say machine learning stuff like that. And uh, based on those tags, like so, if you wanted, or uh, we wanted to give the user to select, okay, which tags you're interested in, or depending on the courses the uh, student has selected, you would have the recommended tags for it. So each tag will have both, like the current tag and the recommended tag for that current tag. And this was how we were going to, you know, recommend our uh, courses to the student. So tag says uh, I didn't get. What do you mean by tags? Uh, a tag is just basically a descriptor of the course itself. So, like course uh, name, you mean? Yeah. So if I take an example of course, say uh, English one, so that would be just the tag for it will be generic or say maybe a language stuff like that, and uh, based on it, the recommended uh, tags for it will be something like. Uh, uh history or say, uh say in forwards like okay so if you're going for the language side or the humanities side you wanted to go for that and similarly if if, if the let's like, say the subject is more an application development we will have tags such as UJS or web development or JavaScript which will or let's say Flask which will link that to that tag as well. Okay. So apart from these technical questions, what what difficulties or what challenges did you face as a team? Well, we are only two people, so uh, it had to be like, distributed between us two. And uh, the difficulty was actually just time management because, as uh, uh, Kaulik had his interim examinations, uh, a lot of the work I had to like, manage. Okay, when he was available and uh, what all he could actually complete in the time that was given. So I happily divided it between uh, the us two and. Uh, so for every document, we say, decide. Okay, you write uh, this uh, the this part, and I'll write the other part, and we collaborated and uh, did that. But it was actually difficult because a lot of the times uh, he was not available due to his studies and everything. A lot of times I was not available because uh, I had other uh, uh, 
optimization and okay, stuff so like that. What, what are you optimization. doing? You are a student. Uh, I mean, uh, what are you doing along with this degree? Mm, I'm uh, doing uh, B Tech in Computer Science. I mean, along with this degree. I mean, my, okay. This, this is the placement series of placements are going on in that college as well as exams are going on. So along with that, there's this as well. And what about you? Uh, I'm currently, this is my main focus, but uh, a lot of things are happening because like uh, in a couple of days, like uh, after the exam exams, like I have to go to USA for because my sister gave birth to her child, first child. And that is why I was a bit busy like managing everything. Okay. Yeah, that's all from my side. Sivani and the Sivan Kanji. Okay, all right. I think we can uh, move to the next group. Uh, this is uh, 20... Group 24. 24. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks, Abhishek. Thank thanks, uh, Palik. Yeah, hi, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Oh, okay, thank you. So we are uh, group 24. Um, um, we are uh, five people in this project. Um, initially, uh, uh, when we started this project, uh, we spent a lot of time on understanding the problem statement itself. Uh, you mean, um, so we started off very ambitiously. We saw the, we tried to get some background on the problem statement. We, tried, we did some literature survey and we realized that it is a, a, a real problem people are trying to solve in terms of uh, uh, predicting the student performance and uh, tuning the, the uh, you know, the course content, online course content uh, or for that matter. Uh, any course content uh, uh, Govin, uh, sorry for uh, interrupting you are you going to show the same doc uh, as the complete presentation no no we have another presentation uh, okay so i mean i just wanted you to zoom in a bit because it's uh, slightly not visible here uh, kripakar didn't join no kripakar didn't join we are four of us today uh, myself uh, govind gokul is there uh, kanishk is there and ganesh is there four of us Okay, is it uh, visible now? Yes, okay. and the other document also. If if uh, some discussion yeah. needs to be done. On yeah, this. this is the this is a milestone document. Uh, so just want to take you through the journey uh, of uh, of our team. Uh, so when we initially started, uh, basically a lot of time we spent on understanding the problem statement. So uh, the uh, the way we. Uh, 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 tackled this, uh, you know, problem statement is like each one of us uh, went uh, and uh, analyzed the problem and uh, uh, brought back their own user stories. And then we had a elaborate discussion and then created the uh, user story document. The way uh, this could, uh, we realized that this problem could be solved in many ways. And uh, uh, but we at the same time we wanted to reduce the scope and uh, make it realizable within the timelines. So the way we envisage the system is like the date, the the on the content delivery system is outside the uh, application, and all the data that is related to student performance and uh, uh, is student profile basically. These are the two major uh, um, uh, categories of data that we want to bring into the system. So the way we designed is like uh, the main um, users, the primary users would be. Um, uh, it would be students, system administrators, and process administrators. Students are primarily uh, who would actually see their profile and capture their learning goals and uh, uh, capture their feedback um, for the project, for the for the course material. And whereas system administrators will be responsible for bringing the data in. A lot of the profile data is captured. We assume that it is captured outside and it is brought into the system through some kind of a batch process. And um, the interaction uh, with the system for the students will be limited to uh, providing the feedback in terms of uh, uh, user uh, UI interaction. There are secondary users in terms of instructors and uh, uh, course content, uh, you know, instructors and course content, uh, uh, people who prepare the course content, uh, we, which, who are the secondary beneficiaries. So when we actually, um, uh, 
so the, uh, the actual gist uh, the recommendation engine is uh, is very elaborate uh, and it ha it is a machine learning project itself and uh, we had uh, uh, very less time in terms of uh, two weeks to implement it uh, but we just went through the uh, project schedule in a waterfall way we could not make it agile way because we didn't have time for multiple iterations so then uh, uh the way we uh, implemented is like as i said uh, initially we went and we created the user stories and uh, we had uh, uh, full collaboration until uh, the av endpoint creation they wherein we distributed uh, two of us worked on the server side apis and uh, two of us worked on ui and one of us uh, played the role of qa um, uh, doing the code reviews and uh, creating the unit tests and uh, and uh, testing the code um, so i would like uh, my other other team members also to share their experience uh, first uh, uh, kanishk will say um, uh, share how he had created the mockups and then uh, how uh, gokul will share how he created the unit test then i'll come back and uh, uh, make a demo about the api and uh, ganesh will uh, do the uh, ui demo yeah kanish take it away Uh, thanks, Govind. Uh, Govind, uh, second thoughts: Would it be a good idea to go through the presentation one by one? It's up to you. Whichever way is convenient for you. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'll do my part, which is the, which is uh, demonstrating the mockups. So it would be uh, nice if you could scroll. Yeah. So we have two sides of this application. One is the administrator side, and then the student side. Uh, the administrative side, uh, I'm sorry for the disturbance. Uh, on the administrator side, the login page is quite self explanatory, followed up by the information which is about the student, each student. That includes uh, their marks uh, throughout their courses as well as their current city. This is supposedly going to be used by the recommendation system to recommend the perfect courses. Uh, there is also an option on the administrator side to add new administrators. Like in our course, there are many teams like the support team, then there's the instructor. So a lot of people could contribute and uh, 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 use the system. So there is an option to add an administrator. Uh, so then uh, let's move on to the uh, screens about the student. Uh, on the student side, uh, the first page would be the dashboard page. It includes summary of everything that is included in the rest of this application, which is on the student side. The first most important box would be the personalized recommendations box on the first screen. These include all the courses which are recommended to the students, uh, supposedly by using the machine learning system we would use. And then we have also placed special importance to the feedbacks which is given by the students who have taken this course before this person. So uh, they have each and every student has an option to submit their feedbacks. Uh, then uh, there is the box that shows the completed courses of the student and also a performance tracker, which would include uh, a graph about uh, the, the scores of this particular student throughout the program. If this user wants to uh, look at the course, uh, more about the course and find out what the other people have reviewed it and who is going to instruct it, as well as other information about the course, then that is what the second screen is about. So on the second screen, uh, like I said, there is all the information about the course. On the third screen, uh, there is information about, uh, there is a summary of information about the uh, the user itself so from here they can also edit some of their personal information and this information would be used by the recommendation algorithm uh, it also has a summary of the feedback that they have given previously the current recommended courses and uh, their performance throughout their course uh, the last page is the feedback the user could give feedback on three uh, areas one is the overall faculty and the core support team uh, 
if for reference they need uh, the reviews of other peers who have given the feedback previously then there they, they can see it uh, that was the student side and uh, uh, this was all the wireframes okay uh, thank you uh... Gokul, can you please share your experience on your new test? Uh, yeah, so let me talk about the API and testing part. Uh, so, Gokul, can you just scroll a bit until we reach this API part? Yeah. So, initially, we were very much visionary and we defined extensive APIs for our application. So, as you can see in the YAML file, uh, there, are, there are many APIs for uh, run operations on student, professor, course, term, feedback, and recommendation. And for this login and logout part and for testing uh, those apis uh, we have made use of the pytest module in python uh, although we couldn't uh, develop the pytest module for every apis but we made sure to test uh, important apis using the pytest module uh, sorry for interrupting you can you please switch on your videos yeah, sure So as I said earlier, uh, we actually uh, our plan was to develop many APIs, but although due to lack of time, we were not able to complete uh, testing and implementation of all the APIs. Thus, important APIs and the testing part were included. That's it. Thank you. Okay. So uh, given the YAML, uh, the way. Uh, uh, Within the time constraints, uh, the way we did is like uh, um, we used a, a Swagger uh, code generator uh, to create the uh, the basic uh, you know uh, skeleton code, and then we implemented the uh, controllers and uh, respective logic uh, for saving into the database. So that was the uh, that was the implementation. Then uh, the API. Uh, uh, basically, the Swagger uses uh, the code gen uses Flask as the framework, and also it has some uh, uh, some built-in mechanism to validate the requests. And the models models are also incorporated based on the uh, uh, based on the YAML definition. So we had spent an elaborate amount of time in defining the Swagger, uh, you know, properly with all the schemas uh, defined, uh, but uh, there was uh, some limitation in terms of the data model. Uh, initially, when we envisaged the application, uh, we had a very elaborate, uh, you know, uh, data model in terms of managing the student profile uh, and also the performance data. And there were several fields that we envisaged to capture as part of the student uh, profile, just to get the, you know, capture the background and probably do some feature engineering on creating the student profile and also a performance profile based on what courses the use uh, the student would take and uh, what kind of uh, you know evaluation uh, uh, evaluation metrics or evaluation uh, um, that a student has for each course course uh, but when it came to implementation we kind of simplified it uh, uh, within given the two weeks timeline uh, but the AML was uh, elaborate, and we could use the AML, YAML to create the you know skeletal structure and then implement it. So the API could be run, and there were some tests. Uh, whatever um, uh, Google created, those test cases uh, could be run. And uh, uh, then uh, Ganesh and uh, uh, Ganesh helped us uh, to create the uh, user uh, interface. Uh, I request uh, Ganesh to take us through the UI screens and uh, and the demo for that. Yeah. Sure, sure. One second. I just share my screen now. Yeah. Is my screen uh, visible? Yes. So this uh, this is the like the screens that we uh, related to the building. So the first is the first is like the login screen. So 
uh, we couldn't uh, integrate this with the back end so uh, i currently have uh, like a, i have set up very like a crude authentication so i'll just show how the authentication is set up right now so i just i just have a set of users uh, with uh, with like the usernames and passwords uh, in this JSON object right here, and then using that uh, and using that to make login. So, so if I enter the correct password, it should take me to the dashboard. If I don't, if I don't enter the correct password, it's say invalid, and uh, and if I enter an invalid username, um, let's say, let's say, user responses. So that is like the basic auth that I set up. Let me now log in. So uh, this is like a dashboard page that. Uh, yeah. So it says that the username, the current grade that he has, and the current semester that he going through. And then it also has all these recommendations in this uh, like home screen. So it's basically the home screen right here. And then you can view what are the courses that you are enrolled for and what are the courses that you have completed. Uh, and you can also view the details. So this thing also I have currently like hard coded in. Uh, so we are not fetching this from like, the database. So it has some like hard coded stuff in the details also. And there's also like a feedback section. Um, so if I click on submit feedback here, it takes me to this feedback section where I can enter my feedback for the course, for the professor, and for the course support team. And, uh, and I can like submit the feedback. And there's also like a profile section which it just displays the name, the role number, and the courses that he has been through. So this is currently minimum. Like in future, we plan to like expand this and yeah, and like uh, yeah, and integrate this with the backend. So this is currently not integrated with the backend. Do this like next stage and payment stages, uh, and the backend is not integrated. So yeah, in future, we plan to integrate the backend and. Except for the US students. Okay. Let me share the screen back. Okay. As I said, uh, um, so we uh, we kind of started uh, uh, very ambitiously uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know implementing this and. Uh, the intent was to uh, make it uh, as useful as possible, but given only two weeks, uh, we we could not implement the uh, re the recommendation engine. All APIs in terms of uh, basically APIs are very simple in terms of uh, student uh, saving the student data, uh, you know the course instructor data and the course data and the term data. Uh, they were all basically the CRUD operations. The bulk of the meat is some uh, recommendation, uh, but there could be uh, multiple multiple ways of implementing it. That's where uh, um, during the last two weeks, uh, you know, we fell short, and that piece could not be implemented. Yeah, that's all uh, we have. Uh, we are ready to take the the challenges. Um, so uh, from the uh, from the approach point of view, we try to adopt whatever principles uh, that were discussed in the course. Uh, we used Jira for project management and uh, um, uh, the scheduling. Uh, uh, we tried to make some, uh, the challenges were in estimating the effort required because uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, initially, when we converged on the user requirements, uh, we had a couple of ways to implement the recommendation engine. But uh, there were two things in terms of one is data generation, the synthetic data generation, and implementing the recommendation engine itself. So um, the time estimation was was big challenge. How much time it would take in terms of given our experience in MLP, um, you know, uh, uh, we realized that uh, two weeks could be challenging, and uh, uh, 
uh, we intend to extend it uh, going forward but we could not do it within the timelines yeah that's all uh, from our side okay fine all right so i see a very complicated uh, database schema used right so any reason for this no that's what see if we're uh, creating the recommendation we thought that uh, student profile and performance profile uh, were the key uh, key things uh, in terms of identifying the features or uh, grouping the students or uh, grouping the performance of students uh, then we ended up creating this uh, uh, all the related background information in terms of uh, uh, educational background and uh, um, the place from which they come or something like that so this was uh, this the the uh, clue was uh, drawn. So when we did the literature survey, uh, the research papers, uh, you know, pointed in that direction. Also, some of one there was one NPTEL course on learning analytics, uh, which kind of uh, uh, directed us in that direction. So when we started, this is what was the path uh, we started upon. So that was the reason for this uh, okay. complicated. Stuff. All right. So. I mean, so the number of models that I see takes up a lot of information, even for let's say ten students. Right? Yeah, yeah. Could have yeah. taken uh, uh, you know information from ten students, added it, and uh, could have created your own uh, you know recommendation system. Doesn't have to be an ML model as for the starters. Uh, that could have been thought of as a next step. But uh, see, the thing is, uh, I I look at uh, at least fifty fields here. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's why then we realized that uh, the synthetic data generation itself is the huge uh, effort and uh, we uh, we started with uh, in those lines but uh, we could not finish okay so i mean if you look at uh, this um, db schema superficially uh, what are the major models that you would uh, you know try to highlight no. here yes yeah, student and the course performance right evaluation right okay so and these are the two things a student profile with ancillary information on the address and the school info the background this is one thing and uh, and the course performance uh, metrics in terms of what is the performance in assignments quizzes and midterm so these are the two things uh, two profile uh, two uh, you know data clusters properly we can say uh, which uh, we thought we would utilize in this uh, recommendation engine okay and uh, so this uh, kind of uh, directs that the student is uh, not only the primary but the only user of the application exactly so okay. if if you see the, uh, if you see the primary administrator is there but administrator role was restricted to uh, just uh, uploading the data from external system so that is how we envisage the uh, uh, envisage the application so the content developers and uh, the course content developers and uh, what do you call uh, instructors uh, these are all secondary use they do not use the system directly uh, but uh, they derive the value out of the system yeah that's right so i mean what i uh, intend to say here is uh, so you are recommending a course to student look at it as a you know the orientation sessions that we have right so the main uh, the people who answer there about the you know what course needs to be taken what should be take what should be leave out for this term yeah. is actually that information is actually or that suggestion is actually given by the instructors right uh, correct correct I've, and uh, given that uh, you know yeah so today it is also. it is and there were also some so in our uh, in our course itself we had uh, you know every every uh, houses like they also have individual groups they people talk amongst themselves they share their experiences if the learning journey is same uh, there is certain similarity between uh, people with similar uh, educational background or uh, taking the similar uh, you know uh, learning journey realizing like in the middle saying that probably they could have taken so that experience also we thought is important that's why the feedback is uh, is from the student as well as uh, student for the course and uh, the difficulty in terms of uh, 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 the faculty and uh, and the support they get from the uh, the course administrators i think that also we thought it's relevant that's how we captured the other information also in the paper 
All right. So I also see that uh, okay, there is no integration between backend and frontend, but frontend to some extent works uh, independently. Uh, does that uh, goes uh, with the backend too? Do we see some uh, information being thrown out by the backend? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I mean, get... what I want to say is, does the backend independently works with the help of APIs or any other way? Yes, yes. Backend independently works. Uh... If you see, this is independent piece. It is running uh, independently, and uh, um, it is actually uh, it is developed as a API um, API server. You can say uh, with uh, with its own uh, um, deployment lifecycle, uh, for that matter. And UI is uh, stands alone in its own development cycle. Okay. Uh, so this uh, SE codes recommender master batch. This is uh, the test cases, uh, right? Yeah, these they are the test on... cases. Yeah. So uh, are they being tested or are they being performed on uh, the back end or the front end? No, no, this is a back end. What I'm so showing is the back end. So this is basically uh, this is a code so a code repository. Uh, these are the tests, right? Uh, uh, these uh, the Swagger server. I said, like we imported so the. Can uh, we see one uh, the application running in one of the APIs tested right here? Yeah, yeah sure. So let's say uh, this one, All right? Uh, um, let's say create student. Yeah, you see, this user got created on the. Oh, oh maybe I. Oh, there's a constraint. OK, fine. No issues. You can uh, have a look at it when you, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, this API, all this API uh, uh, works, actually. OK. All right. OK, I think I'm I'm done. Uh, Nathan, you can go ahead. Yeah, sure, Anders. Uh, OK, Gopi. So I saw you had mentioned some of the evaluation types there, right? So are those the evaluation for your recommendation model? Um, pardon me, Nathan. Uh, so you, uh, I saw some. You have mentioned some other evaluation type in your uh, chart. The chart uh -huh. that you were yes, seeing. yes, yes. So, uh, are those the evaluations for your model? Yes, yes. Uh, they are supposed to be the input. Oh, sorry, they are supposed to be inputs uh, for the uh, for the model. So, as I said, so I we started with uh, basically uh, two feature sets. One is on the student uh, background, 
I mean, whatever the features that we could de derive from student background. And the second is the, the features that we could derive from the uh, student performance. So student performance constitutes... Uh, uh, okay, so this evaluation type is one of those features. Okay, I correct, correct. So evaluation and evaluation type. So we, you know, just to generalize, we have a different type. So idea is to because there could be many number of uh, fixed number of assignments may not be there, right? Eleven, ten. Some courses may have four. Some courses may have ten. That's why we made it generalized. That's and cool. what are the features uh, that you can use from the feedback? Huh, feedback is like uh, uh, we can derive from the text, uh, whatever feedback text, uh, we can derive some sentiment, that is one. Second is uh, the text itself, we can do some kind of entity, uh, named entity recognition in terms of establishing the relationships between the other courses, probably in terms of identifying the prerequisites. Like if someone says that probably, um, you know, in order to perform well in this course, you need to have some kind of uh, background. Probably we can parse the text and identify some entities, named entities, and use it as a um, uh, input for identifying prerequisites. Uh, um, that that was one idea. Um, so that was some. Uh, that was the line of thinking. Okay, so you haven't tried out any machine learning model here. Right? No, no. So, okay. it's, so how this recommendation is working uh, as of now? No, it's not working. There's no implementation for it. Okay, so all those features you have think of for your implementers. If you want to implement any okay. models here, uh, what models you can think of? Clustering is uh, one model. We can um, uh, identify the student groups uh, based on uh, identifying similar students. Clustering of students or clustering of courses? Clustering of students is one thing. And clustering of co courses is also another thing. So for your recommendation system, uh, would you like to cluster students or you would, you, would you like to cluster courses based on the student's performance? Uh, so uh, the courses can be clustered independently uh, mm -hmm. to identify similar uh, similar courses of uh, similar complexities. And students so can also be uh, 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 clustered uh, separately. And the relationships can, be, uh, can also be uh, clustered in the sense like uh, one student taking a, a kind of student taking kind of course how successful he is uh, that kind of information can also be derived okay so apart from these uh, technical questions uh, uh, what was your record among your team yeah so uh, for la first three milestones uh, we kind of all worked together and uh, from the coding point uh, when the coding started uh, myself and Kripakar worked on uh, backend, and uh, uh, Gokul and uh, uh, Ganesh worked on front end. And uh, 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 sorry, Go uh, Gokul and uh, Ganesh and Kanish worked on front end. Uh, Gokul worked on as a test engineer basically. He basically did uh, code reviews and uh, creating unit test cases. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks, Govin. Thanks, the other teams. Uh, yeah, that's all from my side. Uh, we can move to the next team. Thank you. All right, so group number 25, is it, is it here? Yes. Okay. Uh, where is Akshay? Sarita? You didn't join? Yes, ma'am. She told she'll join. She'll join. Okay. I think she'll be here in a minute. Uh, yeah, you can start your presentation. Please switch on your cameras. Yes, ma'am. Is it visible now? Yes, Hello? it's great. Yeah. 
yeah our uh, application is learning path recommendation system um this is uh, about personalized learning to help students achieve their full potential and advance future ready skills and um these are team myself charita uh, and homaja akshaya darpan and akash and i just want to go through what we learned about like in working with this application overall first what is learning path recommendation system it's the platform that recommends learning paths to students based on their interest and learning objectives and the platform empowers educators to take control of personalization and engagement across every student and these are the main uh, like features we have we we found in our application in, uh in terms of student it is browse in learning paths and setting personal goals and tracking their progress and uh with respect to admin it's create um, and manage and monitoring progress and provide feedback yeah yeah also uh, basically our sprint schedule was as follows so for the, from october 2 to october 13 they were uh, identifying users like uh, gathering users stories and then we back in the from for the next sprint we uh, sat and then thought about how to design you design the ui and new fidelity ones for the next sprint we scheduled proper uh, sessions and then we sat together and then designed new ones for the sprint for we learned about the api inbox and how to implement them and everything Hello. Hello. Yes, please go ahead, Akash. Uh, I'm not able to see the screen. Hello. Maybe you can just log out and log in again. Okay, can I continue this slide? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, these are all the scrum meetings we had for each sprint, and uh, this is the Gannett chart, like for all the project schedule that I've prepared in Jira, and Jira, and next is the stories. We'll continue back. How much? Okay, I think Akshay is also not here. Okay. These are uh, user stories of our system. Uh, first, we had three users, um, primary users, se secondary users, and tertiary users. Primary users are students and admins. Secondary users are instructors and academic advisors. And tertiary users are course content creators and data analysts play. And um, user, stories of, uh, user stories for students or uh, uh, provide learning profile, input goals, specify schedule, review and provide feedback, see recommended learning paths and track their progress, user, user stories for admin or load, load enrollment data, monitor system performance, manage course database, manage user data accounts and user accounts and user stories for instructors, ad academic advisors or also here mainly we uh, Take the student and admin, admin as a base users and user stories that have shaped our learning path recommendation system. This user centric approach ensures that every stakeholder's needs are addressed, making education more personalized and accessible for everyone. And yeah, class diagram.
दर्पण कंटिन्यू दी क्लास जॉइन करो हेलो सॉरी सॉरी माय बैड हैम आई ऑडिबल नाउ हेलो यस ओके नाउ लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द ओवरव्यू ऑफ द क्लास डायग्राम this class diagram basically depicts the key entities and relationships that are uh, present in the learning path recommendation system it illustrates how the system analyzes student profiles and the goals that students have to generate their personalized learning paths guiding them towards their academic aspirations uh, deep diving into it uh, let us look at what are the specific ent entities in this class diagram so very first entity is student represents the users seeking guidance on their learning journeys their academic history past performance interests and goals are the crucial inputs for the recommendation now uh, the second entity is course of course course represents the building blocks of knowledge with attributes like aim description difficulty schedule etc so as we see also have the prerequisite which is basically requiring the prior knowledge Uh, next entity is learning path a sequence of recommended for students unique profile in order to maximize their learning efficiency and achieving their goal create next entity is admin is helpful in managing user courses and the ensuring that the uh, integra integ integrity of the data is maintained and and uh, it helps in achieving the goals as well as next is user account user account helps in linking each user to their login credentials and the role that is assigned to them which helps in differentiating the access between levels and permissions given to each uh, type of user next we come to relationships in the class diagram one student has one recommended learning path uh, personalized and tailored guidance based on the needs learning path consists of sequence of courses a structured road map for knowledge acquisition leading towards the student goals student feedback influences the recommendation angel continuous improvement through user input ensuring relevant and effective path recommendations admin manages user accounts and sources that helps in uh, uh channeling the data through various user users not to give the special permissions to the ones who don't deserve them and then there is an enrollment data feeds into the recommendation system which basically requires the past data historical trends inform the future path recommendations enhancing the personalization process so these uh, with this structure there are a lot of benefits as well this system will help students optimize their academic journey admins also gain control over the user management course databases and the performance of the overall system data driven recommendations ensure relevance and efficiency for both students as well as system concluding this the learning path system showcases the collaborative framework for the learning empowering students to reach their academic goals while providing admins with tools to manage and uh, optimally uh, increase the system's effect effectiveness thank you next these are the storyboard and low file little white frame of our application and uh, storyboard and like uh, low file little white frames the these form the foundation of the system that prioritizes user needs and offers a seamless experience we look forward to refining and enhancing these concepts in the high fidelity prototype stage let's see next we have uh, storyboards 
and this is the storyboard and uh, next we have low fidelity wireframe of our system uh, which is created in Canva. and the, these are the low fidelity wireframes for a uh, you we have two use users like student and admin these for student uh, the da uh, dashboard we have uh, like first we have a login for student and admin and then we have dashboard for uh, student which has profile option course browsing recommendation and feedback going through each tab we have my profile uh, we can go through each tab and then admin login uh, we can see all the tabs uh, and then Jenna, sorry for interrupting you maybe other group members can also explain the PPT, right Yes, yes, continue the design of the company. Continue then. Hello. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you're audible. Who's going to continue on the design of components? I'm going to continue. Okay. I don't know why she interrupted. No, no. What we meant is there are around uh, four uh, students in your group, right? And we yes. could see only two people representing. Okay. So we want uh, the, so there are five uh, students, right? Uh, yes, one yes. of us is absent. So there will be, yeah. all, I mean, there will always be, uh, you know, consequences for that. But those who are present should uh, take the part of your application, this slide uh, equally, right? So there are 30 slides and we expect yes. everybody to contribute equally. Yes, sir. Okay, you can go ahead. continue the design of I think some issue is there in her side, from her side. Uh, she is not able to talk or something. Okay, okay. so it's going to, uh, what was she going to uh, represent here? She was going to present the uh, storyboard, uh, low file divisions and design of the components, but she's not able to talk, like mic okay. problem. All right, who is the next one? Next one is me, actually. User stories, is, uh, user stories is Akshayas, and uh, these are all uh, Homajas, next mine, but they didn't, yeah. Sir, Akash is trying to talk, it's not audible, I don't know why. Okay, so, uh, yeah. all right, uh, Darpan has said, Akshay is not there. Yes. Homaja is, uh, like, mic is not audible. So there should be three students. Uh, Akash is already. Uh, Akash already told the uh, that uh, scrums and uh, what division and all. Okay. So uh, how many slides are you going to be representing? Remaining slides. Yeah. AP endpoints to the end. Okay. So let's go to the application directly. Uh, sorry, sir. Let's go to the application directly. We have test cases and uh, code reviews and just this. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, you may have worked on the application, right? Yeah, so I see the technologies and the tools used here. Uh, yes, Backend, uh, frontend, bash. We try, Actually, we don't have any like basic of uh, these things, HTML, CSS, JS, and all. Uh, we tried like, uh, but we didn't we didn't do anything actually uh, any reason for that? all all our group is from btech BTEC only we don't have like html not from cs also we tried we stuck in this course actually we tried to uh, like drop it but we couldn't but we tried our level best to do all these class diagrams using the software and classes we have learned from the videos like in mptl videos they thought about how to do class diagrams and all we we could like we 
put all our efforts to complete all that like in uh, whatever software they are used we tried but uh, okay. all so that... have you gone through the alternatives of uh, flask and html and css if you want to create an application because i guess uh, the tools and technologies were not mentioned specifically so you were free to choose any one of them any any one i mean not only these any out there in the open market uh to what sir like to create example. the application i mean yes. what we are saying is flask flask restful html css all these technologies are there to create an application but these are not the only ones yes sir. okay so uh just want to know how much research you have done on that if you are not aware of html css can there be other ways to create application sir for front end part there is like i would uh, i mean search about bootstrap we can just create the uh, without html okay what is it i didn't actually read it but yeah hello. i don't know hello am i audible yeah 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 yes akash you are audible yeah so so can you repeat the question as my I question did. was uh, i mean i was asking about the application and i see yeah. learn that uh, there is no application created here However, yes, you have mentioned the backend technologies and frontend technologies, uh, instruction yeah. to run the application. Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, we are not expert. Uh, yeah, we tried to code it, but we were not successful in that. So, mm -hmm. uh, like, coming to your question, we did the research actually, and uh, apart from HTML and CSS, I think I'm aware of. I have seen some tools, online tools, where like you can just select a template. for the website or app you want and then it will give you a basic structure of the code mm -hmm. we can use that and like or to make our uh, life simple uh, for designing i think we can use a bootstrap uh, framework to simplify the css work so uh, yes. the thing is we are not asking about what could have been done or what could be done we are asking about okay. what you did yeah so like we wanted to create a basic app so we uh, like search on google like how about like basic html css and everything we tried coding them but we were not successful like we had the ui and like some code we tried coding something for back end like we knew like for api and points and everything but it was it, it was not working like you, we had some other like trying to and, uh, sorry to interrupt we tried to actually yeah. do api endpoints in swagger like they showed how to do it with uh, whatever uh, okay what does swagger do swagger like create the i mean uh, endpoints like uh, the connection between the, the like whatever what is the user interface is like from yeah. class diagram Okay, so if if you would have read more, Swagger does not do that. Swagger only gives you uh, the created APIs. It only documents that. Yeah, create. Create. So created Antes. APIs, right? There is a big word with created. So APIs have to be created with something Creating. else. Uh. All right. So I mean, I hope you understood that the course yes. is about creating an application from the scratch, getting it to the stage where it can be deployed. And uh, all we see is a you know set of slides. Yes, sir. So actually, the thing is, we are all uh, third year and fourth year students from the college, and does not matter. We have twelfth uh, standard students who are doing really pretty, pretty good with the course. Yes, sir. But we had this uh, coursework and internship season going on, so it was very. Again, doesn't matter. I I think you were uh, you are the last group, so you may have uh, you know witnessed a lot of uh, projects where at least something is done. uh given that they are from different places from the you know different places of the country from the different backgrounds from different you know fields some are working some are students yet to, they could find to collaborate and i guess since you all are from iit uh you are all in the same campus right yes sir we tried to do but we couldn't actually complete it okay okay so that is one thing that is about uh, so uh, that uh, basically this presentation kind of displays the effort that you have put in into the uh, you know this project secondly uh, the thing is 
doesn't matter if there is network issues or your mic is not working all these things are you know prerequisite all these things have to be checked before coming to into the uh, the the meeting right yes sir so i don't see that even done properly there was no you know uh, uh, a proper collaboration as such which was the whole soul of this uh, course we don't know uh, we didn't see okay this student has represented this this student has represented this right yeah so there's no point in staying at the you know backgrounds at some point you'll have to come i think you will be having placements very soon yes yes i'm so sorry for the inconvenience but last minute it happened actually before the uh, presentation they all yeah actually agreed to to everything they did they did it but now they have some problem i don't know why suddenly okay okay so the technologies and the tools uh, starting from the first letter to the last letter it is the actual thing that you do for the project okay the entire project from the scratch okay, okay. and uh, we don't see any of it okay fine i think that is it from my end nathan anything you want to say uh, no others nothing nothing from my end just want to know whether have you tried out any ways for recommendations any models or did you think of any ways for the recommendation did you try out to take out uh, bring bring in some of the features for your model not right now okay that's fine that's all from my end others can close it okay all right i think you all can leave with this uh thanks everyone for joining uh i will stop the recording